And we say good morning to you. We're live again at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol, Tennessee on this Food City Friday. Tom Taylor Sports Show, show number 645. They said it wouldn't last, and here we are, and we're going strong and having a big time as always. And our first day of December 2017, big weekend for Christmas parades and all kinds of things going on around the Tri-Cities for Christmas. And it's going to be mild temperatures. It's going to be in the 60s, 50s and 60s. But anyway, that's what's going on as far as Christmas. Big weekend coming up. We are 23 days away as far as you have to shop till Christmas 2017. Got some great specials going on today here at All Food Cities, the one-day fantastic Friday, one-day celebration. Eric, the store manager, is going to be by here in a little while to talk about it. It is nuts. I'm telling you, it is crazy by the minute in Knoxville. The very latest, we're going to have Kevin Harmon join us at the bottom of the hour, trying to sort all this out, but John Curry fired this morning, the athletic director at Tennessee. So now you have a football program that got told no again yesterday by Kevin Sumlin from Texas A&M. He said thanks, but no thanks. It's just a growing list. Chad Morris and Dan Mullen and Chip Kelly and Jeff Brome and Dan uh, – Duran, the guy from North Carolina State, it goes on and on. And so now, someone last night, the recently fired coach from Texas A&M said thanks, but no thanks. So as a result, then you get into the fact that Curry gets fired. Now, the very latest they went to see was Mike Leach, the coach at Washington State. Uh, I don't get that one at all. You're really going to have to sell me on Mike Leach because Mike Leach has a losing record or had a losing record. Let me see if I can get my information here set up and ready to go. I've been on the phone all morning long trying to gather these stories, and so it's uh, it's crazy. I mean, it is nuts what's going on in Knoxville. And as I've said all along, I'm not, a, you know, I'm a card-carrying member proudly of the alumni of Marshall University. I'm telling you, if you're a Tennessee person, not even an athlete, not even a sports fan, rather, if you're just a Tennessee person in general, a graduate or just a fan of UT, excuse me, the Vol Nation, this is an embarrassment, a total embarrassment, and it doesn't need to be happening, but it's happening. So now the coach, I'm sorry, the athletic director, has been canned at Tennessee. So does that put Philip Fulmer in as the AD? We don't know. There's a press conference coming up at 4 o'clock here later on today. Kind of sort all this out, but, again, it is nuts. And so here we go. Mike Leach, the very latest they're looking at, again, at Tennessee from Washington State. The guy's 38 and 37. 38 and 37. At least eight wins in his last three seasons, in each of his last three seasons. So, if you do the math, he's 9 and 3 this year. So, before this year, Mike Leach is, what's, what's 38 minus 9, is 29 and 34 as a head coach before this year. 29 and 34. Anyway, that's who they're looking at. Apparently, as the story goes here, uh, uh, Curry went out on his own to interview Mike Leach. And so John Curry went without the blessing, apparently, of Jimmy Haslam. This is what we're being told. We'll get the official story coming up here at the bottom of the hour. But anyway, bottom line is uh, Curry's out as the athletic director. Apparently, Curry went out to Washington to interview or went to the West Coast to interview Mike Leach, the Washington State coach, without the blessing of Jimmy Haslam, who apparently doesn't want him. And so as a result, it is uh, it is firing time. He got relieved of his duties this morning by the Chancellor, Beverly, Beverly Davenport. So uh, thank you, Jeremiah. So now you got to wonder, you know, this is me talking, and it's my show, but, you know, I'm not so sure I'm sold on the, on the Chancellor. I don't know where she's been in all this, but, you know, she is – kind of hung on and kind of put her fingers in the belt loops of John Curry, the athletic director, which she should to a point. But he clearly blew it back with the Greg Schiano fiasco, which was last weekend. It seems like that was two months ago. So I'm not totally sold down on Beverly Davenport, the chancellor at UT. So she brings him in this morning and lets him go. She fires Curry. So, you know, who's your AD now? All signs for me point to Philip Fulmer. Put him in there as AD. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get the very latest and the full story that he knows about because he's got his ear to the ground. Our buddy Kevin Harmon is going to join us here at the bottom of the hour. We're live at Food City in 
Bristol and Virginia Avenue, Bristol, Tennessee, again on this Food City Friday. Monday will be at Bristol Motor Speedway. Tuesday will be a Movement Mortgage for the brand new open house out there in Boone Creek, right across from Cracker Barrel. Wednesday will be a Chick fil A. Thursday will be a Champion Chevrolet. And next Friday will be at Eastman Road Food City for a Food City Friday. We always start our show, we dedicate this show to the man who hung on the cross unashamedly. We have our fingers in his belt loops. This is his show. It's going to go as far as he wants it to go. And we're at 645 as far as the show number. And the viewers, according to Jeremiah Clark, are growing. We'll get our November numbers here in the next couple of days. But uh, everything we can tell, the numbers are growing. And we certainly like that. So this is his show. Ephesians 3, 18 through 21 is the verse of the day for the show. And it says, now listen to this, this is good. May you grasp how wide and long and how high and how deep my love for you is, a love that surpasses knowledge. You cannot ask or imagine the things I am planning for you. How about that? May you grasp how wide and long, how high and deep my love for you is, a love that surpasses knowledge. You cannot ask or imagine the things I am planning for you. That is awesome. That is the verse of the day again here on this Friday, December the 1st. 2017. Again, we're live. As we said, we're on the road at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol. So here's the some of the sales for all the food cities today. It's a one-day Fantastic Friday celebration. Holly Farms boneless chicken breast. Guess we're going to get the glasses on here so I can see that which I need to see. Holly Farms boneless chicken breast, family pack, $1.69 a pound. Woo, it's a lot better than you can re when the glasses are on. California Seedless Naval Oranges, a four-pound bag, limit two, two ninety-nine a bag. Whole pineapples, ninety-nine cents each at all food cities, limit two. Food City Fresh Whole Boneless Pork Loin, a dollar sixty-nine a pound. Right beside me here, you'll see when we go to the other camera. Got a stack of water here. Food Club Spring Water, twenty-four pack, half-liter bottles, a dollar ninety-nine, limit two per person. Folgers Coffee today, a thirty-one ounce container, four ninety-nine. Country Roast Folgers Coffee. Limit two. Also, they've got today the one-day celebration food club large eggs, 18 to a carton. Limit two per person. Grade eight white food club large eggs for $1.99 a carton. John and Gold apples. Man, those are good. Ooh, those are good eating apples. John and Gold, slice some puppies and put some peanut butter on them. Oh, baby. John and Gold apples, five-pound bag. Limit two per person. $2.99 a bag. Nabisco Nilla Wafers. Put some peanut butter on those. It's good. Anything, practically anything has peanut butter on it's good. Limit two. Nabisco Nilla Wafers, limit two, $1.99 a person. Also today, Food Club Apple Juice or Cider, 64-ounce bottle, 99 cents. Also today, another special, Hostess Twinkies or Ding Dongs, limit four, $1.99 with your Food City Value Card. Those are some of the sales going on today. The Fantastic Friday one-day celebration at all 130-plus Food City locations across four states, Tennessee, Virginia, Kentucky, and Georgia. And so it is nuts. It is crazy. It is an embarrassment, I think. If you're a fan of the University of Tennessee and or a student or an alum or anybody that's tied to Uni University of Tennessee, I mean, this is – it's like – I don't even, I don't know how to – I was going to say romper room, but it's not romper room. It's just – Unbelievable. Who is running the show in Knoxville? That's my question. It will not appear to be Beverly Davenport, per se. I don't think it well, – I shouldn't say that. But she just doesn't look like she's taking a very strong handle on this situation. And maybe by right she shouldn't. I mean, she has – I mean, they put a guy in place to run the athletic department. That's his job. So he clearly couldn't do it. He's gone. He got fired this morning. So maybe Devin, Davenport's not the one we look at and go, okay, who's on first? But – Somebody needs to step up and take control of that. Take control of the athletic department. Maybe it's Philip Fulmer. I don't know. Uh, AD Fulmer, head coach Fulmer. Again, I'll go back. You're talking to guys 38 and 37, 30 and 24 and 30. What I say, 24 and 29 and 34. Let me write that down so I don't keep miss saying it. He was 29 and 34 coming into this season. Tell me why you're going after him. Please, somebody tell me. Because nobody's told me yet why you have not gone after Les Miles. The coach, from, I read his numbers today. Was it, let's see, 142.53, is that right? One, one, 
142 wins and 53 defeats. I think it's what it was. The guy won a national championship. Tell me, why you haven't gone after Les Miles? It's not even been mentioned. As I mean, he's, he's not even had been given the courtesy to say no. But we go after a guy that was Jeff Brown was six and six this year at Purdue. You go after Greg Shiano, who was 68 and 67 at Rutgers. Now you're going after Mike Leach, who is 29 and 34 coming into the season. Tennessee deserves better than that, folks. I'm telling you. Uh, again, I'm a Marshall grad, live here in Tennessee, want the university to do good. I'm not a Tennessee fan, you know. Well, I guess I'm a Tennessee fan on the peripheral. I uh, didn't go there. You know, don't have any ties there except I live in Tennessee. But I'm just telling you as a fan, Tennessee deserves better than what they're getting. And why are you going after these guys that, you know, what, what Mike Leach? I don't know. So someone told you no. And so here's the other thing. So I keep wondering, are these coaches on the phone calling each other and saying, mm, you don't want to go to Tennessee? And we've had some big-name guys say no. You know, Mullen, Kelly, Sumlin. I mean, Sumlin's the second winningest coach in the history of Texas A&M football as far as winning percentages. He says no. Brome, okay, I, I'm not sold on Jeff Brome anyway, but uh, a lot of folks say he's, a, <clears throat> he's an up-and-coming coach. Maybe, but all I can go by is his record. His record doesn't set the woods on fire. Certainly Greg Schiano didn't set the woods on fire. So anyway, bottom line is Tennessee deserves better than they're getting. And, you know, they've become a joke, really, on the national media. And I, Andy gave me the uh, little cartoon yesterday of showed a guy, all he could see is his rear end leaning down inside of a dumpster saying, here's John Cray looking for the next UT coach. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's floating out there. It's an embarrassment. Anyway, there's a press conference coming up at 4 o'clock. We're going to talk to Kevin Arman at the bottom of the hour to get the very latest. He is our UT football guy coming up in about 15 minutes, so we'll get the very latest. We here, we are here live. By the way, we've got a backdrop coming. Uh, we're going to have the backdrop next week, and we'll no longer be looking at the security system. We're out on the road. We're going to have our own backdrop, as we should, and so we'll have that for you next week. So whenever, whenever we are out somewhere besides Champion Chevrolet, we're going to have a official backdrop. Tom Taylor Sports Show backdrop, so uh, which is okay. Today we'll look at the uh, what's it say? It says Reader's Choice Award, the best of Bristol, the best supermarket food city. So that's a good thing to be sitting in front of. <coughs> Excuse me, but come starting next week, we'll have our own backdrop, so we'll be able to uh, kind of block out the security thing up here. So I guess I guess you go to the other camera, but that's going to show you right now all the water's on sale here. We'll do that, and then we'll take a break. And there it is. There's Food City. There you see. That's probably a better shot looking down through there at Food City. And there's the water. It's on sale for $1.99. <coughs> Excuse me. $1.99, a 24-pack half-liter bottle is limit two. And they got a pallet sitting right here, and they've already been ripping off or taking off. Shouldn't say ripping off. Taking off the top of the pallet. They're moving the water. So there you go. Quick break. We'll come right back. We are getting ready to jump in and talk about a lot of sports today on the show. We've got coming up as far as our guest, we have coming up at the bottom of the hour, Kevin Harmon, the very latest from Tennessee football, as we promised. Top of the hour, Mike Hedrick, wrapping up the NASCAR awards night last night and some of the different things happening in Las Vegas with regards to the NASCAR Monster Energy dinner last night, the awards dinner in Las Vegas when they officially crowned Martin Trex Jr. the champion of NASCAR on the Cup Series for 2017. And also a little bit later on, our buddy Dave Martin, he's going to be crowing about his Cavaliers winning 10 in a row. Dave Martin with WLW Radio in Cincinnati. And also his Buckeyes play tomorrow in Wisconsin. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, as I'm going to tell him, they're not going to beat Wisconsin tomorrow. Ohio State's or Wisconsin's going to win the Big Ten Championship tomorrow in college football. You can mark it down. I'm very confident about the Badgers. Have you seen these guys up front? They look like road graders on two legs. I mean, they're huge. Well, does that win you football games? They're 12-0. and 0. They've done something. But I'm going to break Dave's heart because Ohio State, his beloved Buckeyes, they're not going to beat Wisconsin tomorrow, in my humble opinion. Hey, quick break. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at, gosh, where will we start? College football, maybe? High school basketball? Conference opening games tonight? Uh, the state football championships, three got determined yesterday. It's interesting. I was talking to Tim Copenhaver yesterday. Out of the six classification football championship games being played this weekend, or yesterday and today at Tennessee Tech and Cookville. I think it's four or five teams out of the six 
classifications, which is what? Six twos or 12, 12 teams, about half of those teams out of the Knoxville area, Metro Knoxville. So it's pretty incredible the football talent we have in Knoxville, Tennessee. Quick break, we'll be right back. We're going to take a look at some sports here. We're live at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol on show number 645, and I'm very, very proud of that. A lot of folks said this show would not work. They still tell me it's not going to work, and it's working. 645th show. We'll be right back live in Bristol Food City on Virginia Avenue on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best in broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. It's model your clothes out with Jim Employee pricing and 20% off on 17 models of Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. It's a great time to take advantage of closeout savings on our selection of over 300 Chevys to choose from. 17 1500 work truck 23995, 17 track 17548, 17 cruise 16488, 17 spark 10950, 17 Malibu 18985. Closeout savings, Saturday parts and service hours, and shopping online 24 7 will leave you asking, how do they do that? Hello, this is Phil Pipkin, owner of Phil's Dream Pit. The holidays are here, and Phil's Dream Pit has the perfect gift idea for you. Uh, we have our exclusive Phil's Dream Pit brand of barbecue sauces, two 16-ounce bottles of original and sweet fire in a convenient gift box, a great gift for any co-worker, friend, relative, anyone would love it. And the best part, it's only $10 plus tax. Phil's Dream Pit barbecue sauces, the perfect Christmas gift. Call 349-6437. We're at philsdreampit.com, Phil's Dream Pit, the quest for perfect barbecue. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, Lives are changed, one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. I'm on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us. We're live here again, Virginia Avenue Food City, on this Food City Friday. Don't forget, you can win yourself $100 cash. Here's all you have to do to do that. Share, retweet the images or the videos from the show and be automatically entered to win $100 cash and some other prizes as well. we got the first place prize, $100 cash. Got some other prizes. We've got multiple winners in this. Valid on Facebook shares and Twitter retweets occurring from now through December the 14th which was two weeks from yesterday. The winners will be announced, what, three weeks, two weeks from today. Yeah, two weeks from today, on the air, two weeks from today. Where are we going to be on that particular day? I believe, let me tell you real quick, we're going to be broadcasting live from Bluntville, Food City Bluntville, on that Friday, December the 15th. One $100 cash winner, multiple prize winners. You can see on the screen, one share, retweet, equals one entry. There is no limit on the number of entries you can make, so be sure and share this show or retweet the videos to folks uh, all over the place. We would encourage you to do that. Again, the Tom Taylor Sports Show Facebook page or go to TomTaylorSports.com on the website and, uh, again, do that, and we will thank you ahead of time for that. College basketball last night. Let's see who did what in top 25 college basketball play last night. We had, what, four games on tap. It goes as follows. The West Virginia Mountaineers, hello to AT and all the folks 
back yonder in the hills of West Virginia. Oh, Mary Ellen Malone. Oh, gosh, there's a ton of them that we want to say hello to. So, uh, Mary Ellen Malone, uh, Buster Snyder. Also want to say hello to, yeah, up yonder to uh, David Taylor, buddy of mine. So, it's all good. So, that's some of the folks want to say, say hello to in West Virginia. All right, so college basketball, the Mountaineers go to 7-1, 19th in the country. They blow out New Jersey uh, Institute of Technology, 102-69 last night. Also, you had Texas Tech losing. Seton Hall got them, upsetting or knocking off the 22nd-ranked Red Raiders, 89-79 to in the final. It was last night. It was number three, Michigan State, defeating number five, Notre Dame, both at 6-1 and one records now. 81-63, the final. Michigan State wins it. And Texas A&M defeats University of Texas Pan American 78-60. The Aggies ninth in the country in men's college basketball. Tonight, a couple of games on tap. North Carolina, the defending national champion, the Tar Heels, taking on the Davidson Wildcats. North Carolina 6-1. Davidson are 3-2. And, and Creighton, good ball game tonight. Creighton will take on Gonzaga. The Blue Jays of Creighton at 5-1. And, and Gonzaga at 6-1. They're 15th ranked in the country the Bulldogs, so that's what's coming up again for tonight in college basketball. NBA from last night, the Cavaliers make it 10 in a row. Cleveland, again, Cavaliers 121-114 win over the Atlanta Hawks. Boston goes to 19-4. and They defeat Philadelphia last night, 108-97. It was Denver just getting by a 3-17 and Chicago Bulls team, 111-110. It was Milwaukee over Portland, 103-91, and Utah, at a 19-point win over the Clippers last night on the left coast in the NBA. Tonight, it goes as follows. Detroit at Washington. Golden State in Florida take on Orlando. The defending NBA world champion Golden State Warriors at 16-6 and in Orlando tonight. Indiana, Toronto. The Bulls back home hosting Sacramento. Charlotte in Miami. The San Antonio Spurs in Memphis to battle the Grizzlies. Oklahoma City hosting Minnesota. And New Orleans will be in Utah to battle the Jazz in the NBA. National Hockey League last night. It goes as follows on the ice. Predators lose. Vancouver got them. Final is 5-3. to three. Vancouver now 12-10. and 10. The Preds fall to 15-7 and seven on the season. Elsewhere, the Kings skate past Washington 5-2. Montreal doubles up the Red Wings 6-3. It was Minnesota 4, Vegas 2 on the ice. Dallas skates past Chicago 4-3. Calgary shuts out Arizona 3-0. And it was Toronto skating past Edmonton 6-4, to four, the final there. Coming up tonight on the ice in the National Hockey League, Penguins in Buffalo against the Sabres. you got Carolina skating against the Rangers in New York. Columbus home to Anaheim. Ottawa skates in New York against the Islanders. San Jose, the Sharks in Florida. L.A., the Kings in St. Louis against the Blues. I love saying that, the St. Louis Blues. Winnipeg at home on the ice tonight against Vegas. And Colorado, the Avalanche home against New Jersey in the National Hockey League. The Predators skate tomorrow night at home against Anaheim, and also they'll skate on Monday night at home against the Boston Bruins. So that's what's happening in the NBA. That's what's happening in college basketball, top 25, and that's what's happening in the National Hockey League. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. We'll hook up with my man. That would be our buddy Kevin Harmon. Get the very latest in Knoxville. Again, if you heard, missed the outset of the show. John Curry, Athletic Director of Tennessee, fired this morning by the Chancellor of the University of Tennessee, Beverly Davenport, and so it's a free-for-all now, and so a free-fall, I guess. So we'll find out the very latest right after this. Again, we're live at Food City, Virginia Avenue in Bristol on the one-day celebration sale. Whole pineapples, 99 cents, limit two today at all food cities. Selected varieties of Food Club cream cheese, eight-ounce uh, box for 99 cents, limit four. All varieties of meat or cheese in the deli, 25 percent off. Kellogg's Pop Tarts today only at all food cities, twelve to a box, two per person, a dollar ninety nine a box. And food city fresh whole boneless pork loin, a dollar sixty nine a pound. Those are some of the specials today. The Fantastic Friday one day sale at all food cities across the one hundred and thirty plus store chain in four states. Quick break. Back with more. We'll talk to Kevin Harmon next year on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the eight areas of your vehicle that takes constant continuing education is the air conditioner on your vehicle. Well, you would think that AC would be a simple one, but it's getting to be uh, 
a lot bigger than just AC. It's it's the management of the system, not just AC, but heat and everything. It's a lot more computer controlled than it used to be. It used to be just a little button on the dash that you pushed. Now there's all kinds of electronics involved in that. Braking systems it used to be fairly simple. Now some of the newer vehicles, you have to have a computer to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in the, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. It's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import and Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best in broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here are the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance. We follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400, your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. The 2018 Cal Calendar in now for a limited time at Chick-fil-A, The Crossings, in North Johnson City. A 20th anniversary retrospective titled Steers of Yesteryear, including a card with a wide range of free food offerings across the Chick-fil-A menu. Only $8 plus tax, but hurry, supplies are limited. Each month gives you the chance to collect free Chick-fil-A menu items. The offers vary each month, but hurry, supplies are limited. The 2018 Chick-fil-A Steers of Yesteryear Calendar on sale now at Chick-fil-A at the Crossings in North Johnson City. What's happening? Welcome to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We're live on the phone. He's with us. Kevin Harmon's with us. And good morning, my friend. How are you? Wow, Tom. What a morning, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> it's it's crazy. So we've got him on the phone. And give me the very latest. What's happened in Knoxville? John Curry's been fired. Is that correct? That is correct. Philip Foreman, it looks like, has been put in as interim AD. Don't know if he's going to get the job permanently. I know he wants it. Um. Uh, you know, and that's Curry doesn't hurt. He will get the job of David Blackburn won. But, uh, yeah, Curry's out. Right, there's, a, there's a lot of narrative being thrown out there right now about sabotage and things like that, and it's coming from Curry's camp. So it cautioned everybody to be sort of uh, hesitant to believe everything that you read. You know, now it's coming, you know, former did this to majors and that, and, and all that's not true. Um, so... Quite a morning, but evidently he went to Mike Leach without uh, UT knowing about it, and uh, they got fired. 
uh, you know, he, I think he's went off on Rogan. And what this also represents is sort of a, a taking away of power from Jimmy Hazard. We'll see how it all shakes down, but uh, something that needs to happen on the Hill. I'm glad for it. So <clears throat> let me get this right. So he goes to California to meet with Mike Leach, apparently without the blessing of Jimmy Haslam or somebody <laughs> in the athletic department and so or in the administration. And so he comes back in town and they fire him this morning. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know exactly the names of the situation. I can't believe that Haslam would have had anything to do with it. But I believe that the powers that be at the university, president, you know, board trustees, whatever, I uh, didn't know that they were looking at Mike Leach, and um, so they they flew him home and fired him. And not right now, you've got a lot of information coming out about former sabotaging him and things like this. And uh, you have to be careful what you read because it's being pushed out by Curry's camp. And um, you know we won't know what happened, but everything that you know Tennessee fans wanted is is happening. And uh, you just have to sort of you know, garbage in, garbage out, filter through the stuff, and trust the process. Well, I guess the question then is, is there a chance that he could have been sabotaged? I mean, I don't know. But if it's out there, I know well, you know, put it out there, but is there a possibility Philip Fulmer under, undermined John Curry to make him look bad and get him fired? I don't, I don't know. I think Curry was doing a pretty good job on his own. Well, that's um, I mean, but... And, I, you know, it, it, you know, you, you know, I went to that school, you know, and so did Philip Farmer. And everybody that I talked to that I know, I've got a kid there and, you know, friends. And, and people wanted this to end, and they felt that Curry had let the school down. And everybody that I talked to wanted him gone. And they just didn't feel he had the school's best interest at heart. He was only looking out for himself and Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Haslam. And uh, so, you know, two days ago, this is what everybody wanted. They wanted it out. Now that it's happened, you know, then people want to start pointing fingers. You know, I don't know. I don't understand all this, but, um, you know, it's possible. Maybe he did. Maybe he got tired of saying, well, you know, look, this is ridiculous. You know, we're, we're making ourselves a fool. You know, history shows Tennessee football is strongest when Tennessee guys are running this thing. And the people who have passion about the school. And uh, we're weak at the president's position. We're weak at the chancellor's position. Uh, we need somebody with some force in there that can get some things done and make and, and bring the university. You know, we're still the, a top 20 program, and we can still get this done, and we can still uh, compete at a, at, a, at a very high level. No reason we can't. And, you know, it, it's, it had to shake out at some point. I believe this was going to happen. And uh, we'll never know the whole story, just like, you know, but, I, you know, you, you hear about Fulmer pushing out Majors, and that's exactly, that did not happen. You know, I'm, I'm sure that at the time when Majors went off on like he did, that, you know, Fulmer probably said, hey, I can do this. And, uh, but, you know, knowing what I know about every situation, you know, this, I'm all for it. You know, it, it, there's going to have to be some fallout, I'm sure. But, you know, Curry wasn't doing himself any favors. He wasn't doing himself any I mean, there are basketball games chanting fire Curry. That's just not a good look for this university. And uh, we could do better. You know, the pain of the rocks is welcome to the Tennessee Browns. You know, I mean, people are fed up. Fed up. We're talking again to Kevin Harmon again. We're live here at Virginia Avenue Food City in Bristol. All right, so here's my question. I, I got a question, John Curry, for no other reason. Why Mike Leach? I'm looking at his record. The guy's 38 and 37 as a coach. Before this year, he's 9 and 3 this year. Before this year, you can do the math, he's 29 and 34. <clears throat> Why are we going after Mike Leach? Why are we going after coaches with a sub 500 winning record to coach Tennessee football? I don't get that. And why have you not well, said because... me why you have not gone after Les Miles? I keep asking that every single I... day on the show, and nobody has yeah. an answer. Tell me. Please tell me. Well, I, I, the only thing I can think of is that, you know, Curry was out there on his own. You know, the Shano deal he and Haslam tried to ram that down people's throat, and he's grasping at straws. I personally think Leach is a pretty good coach. I'm not sure if he could get it done against the bigger dogs in the SEC, but he'd sure be entertaining. Um, we don't need entertaining. We need I, I don't, We had entertaining. We yeah, I agree. We don't need entertaining. We need yeah. to win football games. Go ahead. I'm I agree. You know, and 
and we, you know, and we were just kind of, you know, spitting in the wind. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't even plan to know why Lance Miles hasn't been given a call. Uh, Seventeen thousand. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand why we were talk to a guy from North Carolina State whose own fan base doesn't even want and uh, then get rejected by him because they got him more, more money. And, uh, you know, you, you hear all kinds of things coming out, but we're just, we're, we're at the point now, we're just grasping straws and we're, we're floating in the wind like Forrest Gump's feather. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just pathetic. And we're the University of Tennessee. We're a top 20 program. We're a top 10 program and, we, and wins. You know, we have, we're the most profitable athletic department in the SEC. Uh, we've got the wherewithal to do better than what we've been doing. And uh, everybody else has hired their coach, and we're flapping in the breeze, yep. you know, like Forrest Gump's. Or something. You know, so, yeah, good riddle for John Curry. I'm sorry, but uh, he's, he's alienated his fan base against Tennessee and administration. And, you know, I mean, what? What you know? What the fans did to get Jack Shiano out was unprecedented, and you know he just lit a fire under everybody. And you know this it can't surprise people. It can't surprise people. We're talking to Kevin Armand again, our UT football guy. So John Curry is gone. There is no athletic director. There's a press conference at four o'clock today. I don't know what that's going to be about, but uh, Curry's out. We we don't have an AD. We don't have a football coach. We've got recruiting coming up. The first signing date, December the 20th. We still don't have a captain of the ship. Now, we don't have two captains. We don't have a football captain of the ship, or ship, I should say, a captain of the football team ship, nor do we have a captain of the athletic department ship now at the University of Tennessee. So, uh, it just, it's a laugh. I mean, they're a laughing stock, Tennessee is, unfortunately, in this country. But, you know, I've heard this several times since last night. Boy, Mike Leach would be entertaining. For crying out loud, we don't need anybody to entertain. We're being entertained already by the shenanigans of Tennessee. We need a football coach in there yeah. and win football games, man. We don't need to, and we had an entertainer in Lane Kiffin. That didn't do so good. So we need somebody who can win football games. And I don't think Mike Leach is the answer. Yeah. Has he said no? Or well, I mean, I, I don't even know if he's been offered. I don't, I don't think this is going to help us any. <laughs> uh, he doesn't know he's going to work for it. And, you know, you know, that's where we are in this search. We're just looking for anybody that can provide some kind of clue. And he's had somewhat of semblance of success. We don't have a plan. You know, we, we obviously that we, we put all our eggs in Shiano's basket and the, and then the fan base revolted, which left a big egg on uh, Curry's face. You know, now he's out there just trying to get anybody. You know, at the point, Tennessee fans are like, just give us a coach and we'll deal with the rest. We're tired of being looked like an idiot. You know, and I don't think, you know, so it's just, you know, and Mike Rich is like, well, he's a pirate, you know, and whatever. You know, we all like Jimmy. You know, so, we, you know, we could deal with it. And he does win football games. He's had some decent teams. He's never had Tennessee's resources. So everybody's trying to put everything together and make it fit in their own minds and just get us a coach and so we can just move forward. <laughs> so while Tennessee is sitting there spinning in the wind, you got Florida out there beating the streets, not recruiting. They got a coach, and Mississippi State's got their coach, and everybody else out there hitting the streets with their with their coaching staff doing the recruiting. And Tennessee, there's not a chance that a recruit right now will take a shot at Tennessee. I don't think they don't have an athletic director, they don't have a coach. I mean, it's it's just pathetic. I, it's just and so to even consider Mike Leach at 38 or yeah 38 and 37 is just nonsense, quite frankly, in my opinion. But uh, again, you got to – so, all right, going forward, we see the – as Dad used to say, we know the problem, now we can come up with a solution. What do you do for the AD? What do you do for a head football coach? Because you got to have somebody quick now at Tennessee. Well, I think what you're going to see is former be put in that position, former Blackburn one, Tennessee guys. And um, then you'll see us probably go, go get a Tennessee guy, somebody that won't – to be here and won't use us for leverage to get a better contract. And we may suffer for it originally, but I think that you'll see them try to surround him with good people. And uh, because that really is about what it's about is mentorship and getting good coaches in here that fit. You know, if you, if you look at Jones, you know, he didn't hire very good coaches or they didn't work out very well. Shoot was an obvious example. 
you know, it's come out that they only would pay a six hundred fifty thousand dollars for an offensive coordinator, so he had to take Larry Scott because nobody else would come for that money. You know, Tennessee needs to get their act together, and they need to get up there. If they want to play with Alabama, they're going to have to do what Alabama does and, and get people in. You know, I don't think Jones was the answer, but we didn't do our best to help him, obviously. And we've got to, you know, I think with Tennessee people running the ship, um, you know, they have a it, it tighter in with some of the other boosters. I think that we'll be able to get some things done. And um, we'll – you know, get a good good athletic director in there as a Tennessee guy, and let's let's move forward. You know, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this whole thing. You know, and we were talking. We were other day. You know, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So here we are. We're at worse, and so I think from now on maybe we can get a little better. We're talking to Kevin Arman, so we move forward. And so if you could go out there right now, I'm going to give you the checkbook, give you the wherewithal to go get whoever you want. Who do you go get right now, today, sign them and, and negotiate, cut the contract, get it going? Who would you go get? Anybody in the country? Uh, anybody in the country? Besides, Lord have mercy. Well, let me back it up. Besides, <laughs> anybody that's eligible to go out there and get them? Well, you know, I don't think Gruden's the answer, but I would go back to a, a Jeff Brom or a um, or that type of guy. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think right off the top of my head. Uh, it wasn't realistic, you know, but um, there are coaches out there, I believe, that uh, would want this job, and uh, I can't even really think of any right now. I'm just kind of off my Kevin off the Steele. top of my head. The guy, but, you know, Justin Fuente would be a great get. No, I don't think he's going to leave. He's not coming. Kevin uh, Steele. No. You know, Steele was in school when I was there. He was a defensive end, and uh, he's, he's had his ups and downs, but I do believe that he would – he could bring in some uh, good coaches, and um, he's, he's worked for an awful lot of good coaches. He's fifty nine. He's you know my age, and um, I you know it's it's he's a Tennessee guy, and I'm okay with a Tennessee guy. I mean, I'll 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 live with that. I think he'd bring in some Tennessee coaches and guys that have a passion for this program and want to see it succeed, and you know get a guy like a Dale Jones in here and and and, and make you happen. And I'm so sick of you know this you know people just playing with our football program it's a proud program and um you know we need to get some good coaches in here we need to make it happen and i don't believe john curry can do that well obviously not he's gone they've sent him packing so you know he had a bow too here's the other thing from the financial standpoint kevin you still got to pay butch jones you still got to pay his assistants you're going to have to pay curry has a buyout on his claws i i I read the other day where it's five million dollars. I don't know if that's true or not, but he does have a buyout clause. And now I'm reading where Greg Schiano may end up taking Tennessee to court from a legality standpoint, the way he was handled and treated over, uh, uh, you know, over th- how things went this past weekend with Greg Schiano. So they're on the hook for a lot of money at Tennessee if this thing doesn't, you know, financially. I'm, I'm speaking of. Well, yeah, Tennessee's got some big money guys, and I don't think that this decision was made without talking about that kind of stuff. You know, Shiano, I don't know what leg he's got to stand on. He's probably hoping the university is settled. But, you know, what's he going to do, sue the fans because they got him his job? I mean, you know, so, you know, if no contract was signed, I don't know what the deal is. But, um, you know, memorandums of understanding, letters of intent mean nothing in a court of law. So, you know, it, it, let him sue, you know, and the university will give him a couple thousand for it to go away, whatever. He, you know, that's that just going to put another nail in his coffin and try to get another job. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, Curry probably does have a buyout. Some of those guys, that's chump change. So, you know, the, the, the benefit of having a good football program is that uh, your enrollment increases, your revenues increase, um, your sales increase as far as licensing material and apparel. And I used to run them all over there. And I can tell you when Tennessee had a bad year, it hurt sales, it hurt business. And, you know, Tennessee is an engine in this area, in this, in this part of the state. And we need our flagship college, you know, the engine that runs it, we need it to be humming. And so, you know, five million is a drop in the bucket considering if you have a, a good year, the sales and the ticket prices and the, the ticket sales and the uh, apparel sales and the tax base that's increased. I mean, it's nothing. I mean, you know, right now, you know, I went to the Vanderbilt game and there might have been 60,000 people there. 
and that hurts you as a as a as an economic engine and and it's part of the state so we need we you know five men dropping the bucket for what what we can do john curry's buyout is 5.5 million dollars i just looked it up so uh he gets five yeah. so i don't i guess since they fired him he gets a i don't know if he's gonna get a lump sum or they're gonna stagger the payments but curry gets five and a half mil to get canned from the, the chancellor this morning in, in knoxville Kevin, if anything well, shakes loose, no. I'm going to call you back later on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, you know, our most, our most, uh, influ- our, our biggest benefactor is the guy that owns Dish TV, and he's worth twenty billion dollars. You know, five million is nothing. If if that's the route he took, but I guarantee you, somebody in the booster rank said, "Get rid of him. I'll pay his buyout fee." And you know, that's that's how all that works. And um, so, you know. Good riddance. There you go. Kevin Arman, great job, my friend. Thank you very much. And the continuing saga as Knoxville turns is what we're calling it. It's like a soap opera. So, well, it's like knock, knock, no. Knock, (laughs) knock, who's there? Not you anymore. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) I'll talk to you soon. Great job, my friend. All right, Tom. Bye-bye. Yep. Great job again, my man, Kevin Harmon. So Curry's gone. Five and a half million dollar payout. Uh, Again, now we're getting uh, comments that from Curry's camp that Fulmer sabotaged the job so he could take it over and, and be the AD. So, uh, of course, he didn't get the job he thought he was going to get before uh, when they hired Curry, nor did David Blackburn, who was the athletic director at Chattanooga, has since left the program. So I'm telling you, as I said earlier in the week, it's like North Fork Southern Railway, man. It's a train wreck. I'm telling you. Quick break. We'll be right back. Top of the hour, we'll talk NASCAR with Mike Hedrick to get a wrap-up what's going on or what it went on last night in Vegas with the uh, wrap-up of the cup uh, dinner last night, the awards dinner, officially naming Martin Trex Jr. the winner of the 2017 Cup Series. And we'll take a quick break. My man Eric's in the house. He may be the next coach at Tennessee. Can you coach? You can't do any worse what we got. Mike Leach, 38 and 37. What a joke. 38 and 37. They're going to go hire this guy. Before the season started, he was 29 and 34 at Washington State. Should not even have been on the radar to talk to this guy. 38 and 37 is not going to get it done. Greg Ciano, 68 and 67 as head coach at Rutgers. Are you kidding me? Who made up this list? I mean, again, I go back to the same guy I've been saying for two weeks. Les Miles. Don't forget Gruden. He's not coming. He would have already stepped up and said, you don't want Kiffin. I don't think you want Kiffin. The guy won a national championship. What, two BCS titles, the national championship with LSU, and the SEC West. Obviously, he can coach. Obviously, he can recruit. He probably has better resources at Tennessee to recruit than he did at LSU. That's no knock on LSU, but you got Tennessee and the facilities and so on and so forth, but not to say LSU's facilities aren't good, but I would think you have a better shot recruiting. I would think Louisiana, LSU, if I went back and looked at the roster, I would think they're primarily Louisiana kids and maybe Texas kids, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. But I would just think a, a Tennessee head coaching position affords you a better recruiting mm, territory, I guess, than maybe LSU. Either way, the guy can coach. Give him a shot. God, 38 and 37. Holy smokes. Quick break. Eric's in the house. We're talking Food City coming up next. We've got all kinds of things to talk about. We've got the dinners you can get for Christmas. We've got the fruit baskets you can get. We've got the one-day sale. He's going to talk about Tennessee football. He may be the coach. I don't know. I may be the coach before it's over with. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. What a train wreck. It's the Tom Taylor Sports Show, show number 645, live from Food City, Virginia Avenue in Bristol. Monday, we'll be in the lobby of Bristol Motor Speedway, hanging out there with the kids pushing speedway and lights and tickets and BMS. It's Bristol, baby. Be right back right after you hear this. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to imp- Okay, I'm going to get rid of this guy and put... E-R-I-C-S-A-N-D-E-F-U-R. Make 
sure you're centered up, and you is. All right. You're going to be on one coming out of the break. Okay. And we're back with the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us again. We are here live at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol, and he's here. Let's get him on the screen. There you see. Boom. There he is. And let's uh, – look like I hit the wrong button a while ago, and I apologize. Trying to do too many things, but let's get him on there. And there he is. Morning, sir. How are you? Just fine. You doing all right? I'm doing great. Thank you for stopping by here. And you're, you're in sports. You've been around sports. It's a train wreck, isn't it? Did you go to UT? I didn't go to UT, but, boy, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, something it's just pitiful. I mean, it's like, honest to goodness, it's like a, it's like a Dallas TV show, like a sitcom. It's like who's, you know, who's after who, and now they're accusing former of sabotaging, and it's just nuts. The whole thing's crazy. But anyway, if you missed it earlier, John Curry relieved of his duties this morning. He's the athletic director at the University of Tennessee after flying by from California, interviewing a guy they didn't want him to interview, Mike Leach. Apparently did it on his own. They've canned him. Former maybe the intermediate. He got a press conference at four. You know, we still don't have a football coach, and recruiting season is still going on. We got our first signing date, recruiting season coming up on the 20th. So you don't have a coach. If you're a recruit, are you going to UT? Uh, not at this point. No. Not even knowing who a coach no. is going to be. No. It's, it's, or the AD. You don't have an AD now. So every SEC coach is going in on these UT recruits going saying, hey, Eric. You don't want to go to UT. They don't have a coach. They don't even have an athletic director, man. Why would you want to go over there? And I would have to agree. Uh, so I, I wouldn't let a kid of mine go there right now. No, it's 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 sad. But anyway, we're here talking about Food City. Fantastic Friday, one day celebration. What's going on? Well, you know we, you know things are hot in Knoxville, but they're hot here too. So we, you know, we've got a one day ad going. It's uh, called Fantastic Friday. Started this morning when we opened. Goes all the way till midnight. And, you know, right now we've got some really hot prices. We've got um, you know, the boneless pork loin whole, $1.69 a pound, four-pound bag of navel oranges, two ninety nine. the 24-pack food club spring water, $1.99, Folgers Country Rose Coffee, $4.99, um, two for 10 24-pack Coke products. We've got, uh, you know, it's Christmas right around the corner and all the cooking, we've got the Food Club Large Eggs, 18 count for $1.99, and, and Food Club Orange Juice, $1.69, and that's just, you know, that's just a few of the good deals we got going on today. Those eggs, a buck ninety-nine for 18 to a cart and limit two. That that's pretty strong, isn't it? That's good. I mean, that's that this time of the year, that's a hot item. A lot of deviled eggs being made for the holiday dinners, and so a lot uh, of eggs being used to make things, and mm -hmm. it's, so it's a good deal. Oh yeah. On the box side, tell me about some of those specials too. Well, you know, like I said, we got the 24-pack Cokes, two for 10, and you don't see that price too too often anymore. Um, you know, cream cheese is a hot item for the holidays. We've got it today, 99 cents. So that you know, that's, that's a deal. It's hard to beat. Whole pineapples in the, uh, in the over in the produce department, 99 cents each. So. Lots of hot deals is today. Absolutely, and this is at all the stores, not just here at the Food City in Bristol, Delicious. but at all the stores. Folgers Coffee, four ninety nine again, limit two. Coca Cola products, twenty four pack, twelve ounce cans, two for ten. Tell me about the uh, bath tissue or Viva paper towels. Got that going on today too, we right? Got that, we got that going on. Buy two, save more. Makes it two for ten. You know that's the twelve rolls, twelve roll packs, and it's a, a good hot price. Then in the deli, you got the the meat and the cheese on sale. Yeah, this is something that we're we're trying, and it's a really good deal. All the the meat and cheese over in the deli service case that you get sliced for your sandwiches and for the party trays and things, you know, twenty five percent off today, every variety. You can't beat that, man. It's strong again here at Food City, where we are broadcasting live again, Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol. Love coming up here. Egg does a great job and always rolls out the red carpet for us, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, gift uh, fruit baskets. Let me talk about fruit fruit baskets for just a second. We've got them here. I want to uh, talk about how you can get fruit baskets at Food City out of the produce department, and you guys sell a bunch of those. Tell me about that. Well, you know, you know, we've we've got a big display already built, ready for ready for grab and go. But you know, that's not all that we do. You know, if you uh, want a, a, some type of specialty fruit basket, or you know, made a, a certain way, our produce helpers will. We'll gladly take your order, get the, get the basket ready, and have it, you know, have it ready for you to take to where your event. Um, and, 
And you have different prices. Uh, you have We've starting the petite baskets basket. that start from five ninety nine and go all the way up to forty six ninety nine. But and you can customize them too, right? If you yes, want, you if you want one that has more apples or more pears, or you can pretty well tell, yeah, tell we'll, them what you want, right? We'll we'll make them to sure. however the customer wants them. Absolutely, it's a great deal, and that's going on again at Food City for the holidays. Of course, year round, but obviously for the holidays, it's uh, a bigger bigger item as far as promoting than, than normal. But you do fruit baskets year round, right? We do them yeah. year round, but you know this time of year is just a, an extra special time for fruit baskets. So on Eric Sandifer, you see on the screen, Food City Store Manager here at Virginia Avenue, the Food City Pet Club, gearing up for their annual pet hunger drive now through January 2nd through at every store. During the drive, you're invited to purchase prepackaged pet food bags for only 10 bucks. Once you purchase it, the bags can be deposited in the special collection bin here inside the store. 100% of the food donated benefits local animal shelters throughout Food City's market area. And then, here's something pretty cool, for every $10 that we purchase, we get uh, get some value. Card. See, using our value card, we get a chance to win some moolah. Is that correct? That's correct. You get a chance to win uh, five, uh, to, to be able to win, make a five hundred dollar contribution to a shelter of your choice. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. So every ten dollar prepackaged bag that goes to all the local animal shelters. Once you do that, uh, using your Food City Value Card, you get a chance to win a five hundred dollar contribution to the to the shelter of your choice can't beat that either so uh that's neat the john Berry toy drive still going on it is yeah cool. tell us about that folks may not know what that's all about that's just uh it's a uh, john Berry was a, a a local student mm -hmm. in bristol and um she was tragically murdered yep yeah. and um her parents since then have started a food uh, a toy drive to help the local kids of the area for christmas and it's something that we've done for the last several years that it's done real well, and you know, we'd like to invite everybody to come by and you know make a toy donation, and it definitely goes to a great cause. Absolutely. Of course, it's uh, it's been going on for several years now, the toy drive, and so they do it in her honor, uh, John Berry, and Food City gathers a lot of toys, and this young lady's honor goes to kids who aren't going to otherwise have much of a Christmas. We also have the regular sale paper. Now, what we talked about today was uh, the one-day sale, but you've got, got a lot of buy one. I've learned the lingo. It's BOGO. Is that right? That's correct. See, I've learned yeah. some BOGO. Got some BOGOs going on. Tell me about it. We've got quite a few going on. I mean, right into, in our weekly ad, we've got the, the Idaho five-pound potatoes. Buy one, get one free. Um, we've got sweet onion, three-pound bags. Buy one, get one free. We've got um, Frito-Lays, Doritos. Buy one, get one free. Food Club shredded cheese or chunk cheese which is a great holiday item. Buy one, get one free. We've got the diamond walnuts, chopped pecans or walnuts. Buy one, get one free. That's an eight-ounce bag. Just a host of buy one, get one free this week and a lot of just great, great deals. All right here at your Food City. and Again, all Food City, so buy one, get one free. Tell for folks out there who don't know, we keep talking about that value card. It's pretty easy to get a value card if you don't have one. You can uh, walk in and get one, and it really opens up the door to a lot of savings, doesn't it? It does. You know, you can come in just a matter of a, a, a couple minutes. They've got your value card ready to use, and, uh, you know, it entitles you to all the savings in the store, you know, different different giveaways that we're doing throughout the year, race season coming on. You know, they do, they do you know, do race a lot of race promotions through the value card of giveaways and just a good thing, a good way to save money at Food City. Speaking of race tickets, you can buy your race tickets right here right now for 2018. The Food City 500 coming up in the spring. <clears throat> it's going to be here before you know it in the month of April when they, all the NASCAR boys and, I guess, lady, I don't know if Danica's back, won't be back in the Cup Series, maybe back, but certainly all the guys will be back for 2018 for Bristol Motor Speedway. You can get your tickets at any Food City uh, customer service desk, right? That's correct. You can come by. Save a little money doing it, and uh, it's a good way to get take, get make a great Christmas gift. Yep, and right but, here, uh, I've got it right here in my little stock of stuff. Check this out. We have, uh, again, the Food City tickets, now offering Food City 500 tickets for the uh, Food City 500 weekend in April. Food City 500 tickets are $50 for adults, $10 for kids 12 and under. The August Bass Pro Shop NRA Night Race right now tickets are $60 for adults and only $10 for kids. 
Also, the Xfinity Series in April, it's the Fitzgerald Glider Kids 300. And of course, in the fall, it's the Food City 300. Those are $30 for adults per event and free for kids 12 and under. So all the tickets will be reserved seating, selected by BMS, knowledgeable ticket office, and emailed prior to race week. So, and new this year, how about this, Eric? It's pretty cool. Each ticket purchased at Food City, you'll get 500 additional value points on your Food City value card and are redeemable to save on fuel and groceries. So uh, each ticket you purchase, you get 500, 500 value points. Yeah, and that, That's pretty strong right there, Chief. Uh, you know, and with the uh – been able to use that with your fuel points on Wednesdays when you can double your fuel points. You know, it makes it a great deal. No brainer. <laughs> no brainer at all. Yep. Just another way to save. So everything going on again right here. And so uh, Virginia Avenue Food City, you've been the manager here for how long? I've been the manager here for 16 years. 16 years. So you know your customers, don't you? I'm a, I get to know my customers very well here. Yeah. You probably a lot of them are maybe even second generation. They're having getting married and having kids and, and coming in and shopping now, right? Maybe even three yeah, generations. Even working here now. Yeah. So. Well, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> even working. But it's a it's a great community. It's a great place to work. I've really enjoyed this this store. The customers have always been good to me. And so sixteen years going strong. Sixteen years going strong. Thirty one years total. Wow. 31 years in the grocery business. 31 years. That's a lot of stamping cans, ain't it? <laughs> That's a lot of it. It's changed a lot in the last 30 years. It sure has. <laughs> it sure has. Give me some taters. You want to come back in a little while and do it I'll again? come back in a little bit. You got it. We'll take a quick break. We'll go to Northern Virginia. We're going to talk NASCAR with Mike Hedrick, the NASCAR fans reporter, coming up next year live at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol on show number 645 of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best in broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. It's model your clothes out with Jim Employee pricing and 20% off on 17 models of Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. It's a great time to take advantage of closeout savings on our selection of over 300 Chevys to choose from. 17 1500 work truck 23995, 17 track 17548, 17 cruise 16488, 17 spark 10950, 17 Malibu 18985. Closeout savings, Saturday parts and service hours, and shopping online 24 7 will leave you asking, how do they do that? Hello, this is Phil Pipkin, owner of Phil's Dream Pit. The holidays are here, and Phil's Dream Pit has the perfect gift idea for you. Uh, we have our exclusive Phil's Dream Pit brand of barbecue sauces, two 16-ounce bottles of original and sweet fire in a convenient gift box, a great gift for any coworker, friend, relative, anyone would love it. And the best part, it's only $10 plus tax. Phil's Dream Pit barbecue sauces, the perfect Christmas gift. Call 349-6437. We're at philsdreampit.com, Phil's Dream Pit, the quest for perfect barbecue. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, Lives are changed, one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. We're back live again on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us. We are uh, with my man on the phone, Mike Hedrick, with us, NASCAR's fan reporter, Northern Virginia. Good morning, my good friend. How are you? Doing pretty good. Like I said, I almost didn't pick up the phone there because I saw the area code was coming from Tennessee, and I thought the, the Vols were wanting me to be the coach or something <laughs> like that, Tom. But I knew it was you calling, so 
so I made sure that I answered this time. Yes, you answered because you just never know. If you get the job, can I be the offensive coordinator? Would you let me do that? You know, you you can. Uh, no, you, you can you can be my offensive coordinator. We'll go down there because we'll hey we'll take it just for the buyout in case we do a bad job. I mean, a couple million dollars to get fired. I'm on that. Exactly. I'm all about that. No question. Again, we're talking to our buddy Mike Hitting, the NASCAR fans reporter. So we wrap up the season kind of officially last night with the dinner in Las Vegas with the Cup Series. Tell me about it. You know, it was great, and not only was the coverage on TV great, but i got to give a big shout-out to uh, Bristol Motor Speedway's own Heather DeBow. She took over the Facebook for Bristol. She did a great job. She was interviewing people and going places that you know fans really want to go to, so she did a great job. We see her around the track running around with Jose. Uh, I met her years ago. She worked for Speed TV. I did a little catering for them and Jeff Hammond. But, yeah, great to see her out there. I, I kind of wanted to go to Vegas. I thought I looked good in a tuxedo, but... Uh, you know, I think it was a whole, I stole the chariot that one year, and I think that held against me. But, but it was a great event out there. I mean, besides, you know, Martin Truex Jr. being, the, you know, crowned the champion, uh, we also found out or we learned that the most popular driver, again, Dale Jr., uh, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 15th time. I mean, it's great to see him go out that way. Uh, most popular in the Xfinity was Elliott Sadler. That's his third time. And then the trucks was actually rookie uh, Chase Briscoe, uh, most popular driver in the trucks. So great to see that in the rookie of the year category uh we learned that the that jones boy eric jones won the uh, cup rookie of the year william byron won uh, rookie of the year for the xfinity and chase briscoe got the uh, rookie of the year in the trucks here's a question for you tom has any driver ever been rookie of the year in all three series no we'll say no until this year here, Eric Jones is the first one. He's a rookie uh, this year. He was, uh, won it this year here in Cup. He won it last year in Xfinity and the year before in Trucks. I think it's getting ready to happen again uh, because last year in Cup, William Byron was the w- rookie of the year. This year in Xfinity, William Byron is the rookie of the year. And next year he goes to Cup. And really, it's him and uh, right now that have announced it would be him against Bubba Wallace. I think you'd have to give that one to William Byron. So it, that, that might be a, the, one of the shortest records uh, in NASCAR right there. We're talking to Mike Hedrick, the NASCAR fan report. He joins us Fridays and Mondays. And, and gosh, so we crown the most popular driver. And You know, I'm sure that means a lot to these guys. It would to me that the fans think I'm the coolest guy in that particular series, whether it's Elliott Sandler, Dell Jr., or Chase Briscoe. So I think that's something to be very, very proud of. That means you have went out and, and shook enough hands, kissed enough babies, and, and showed that you care about the fans in NASCAR. And they've rewarded you by saying you're the most popular driver. You know, and and not just NASCAR, you know, saying that to to Dale Jr. and the others, uh, but Chevrolet gave Dale Jr. the Chevrolet Lifetime Achievement Award uh, and actually gave a car for him to give to his foundation for them auction away. So, you know, that's a manufacturer looking at Dale and just saying, you know, this is something you've done great for not just the whole sport, but us us as a manufacturer. And we also learned that Dale Jr., uh, we're going to see him at Daytona. He's going to be the Grand Marshal for the 60th annual annual Daytona 500 right there in February. So that's going to be great. The guy, he's here to stay, and that's great for the sport. Donald Mike Hedrick, Kurt Busch says, I'm not worried. We're still going to get a contract signed. But, you know, I keep thinking every day that passes, if it's that sure of a deal, why haven't they done it? Uh, I still keep hearing Matt Kenseth may take over that ride, the 41 ride next year for Stuart Haas. Do you think Bush is back? Do you think there's going to be a change? And why the delay in getting this thing signed? Because they've been talking about that since the August race in Bristol. You know, I, I'm going to try not to guess on that one. I, I still think it comes down to to uh, Monster. Uh, they're holding off right now. Normally they would have told uh, NASCAR itself whether they're going to be the uh, the main sponsor after the, uh, the 2018 season, and I think that's what Stuart Haas is waiting on, too, to see if they're going to have that Monster's uh, money. I think uh, Kurt, to stay in that seat, he's going to wind up having to take a pay cut. Uh, I think maybe some of the big drivers that's going to be in there, you know, what they're going to need to do. I, I'm not sure if he's there or not. I'd like to see him still racing i'd like to see matt kenseth in a good car next year uh so i don't know what they're going to do with that but you know that's that's still still playing out and i think that has a little bit to do with the uh the monster energy title thing well again we're joined by mike hedrick live in northern virginia the nascar fans reporter we lose one of the pioneers of the sport earlier this week tell me about it 
Yeah, we sure did, and, and, and not just a pioneer of the sport, but as I really went and, and did a little bit of, of, of research on the man, because I think anybody that's, uh, you know, I, I always say that there's not a lot of old fools, and especially people that are in the Hall of Fame. You want to go and, and see what you can learn from them. What a fantastic man, not just only in, in the sport, but as an American as well. We're talking about Bud Moore. Bud Moore passed away this, well, earlier this week. He was age 92. He was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2011, and the reason why is he had two championships as a car owner and then also as a crew chief. Now, he and a guy named Joe Weatherly, they were on fire in the early 1960s. In fact, they won eight times in 1961 and 12 times in 1962 when they got back-to-back -back ch championships. They probably would have gone on and led a dynasty like the Petties did, except for Joe Weatherly was killed in a race out of Riverside in early 1964. So they might have had one of those kind of dynasties. More fascinating is before he even got into NASCAR, uh, at the age of 18, he was an Army machine gunner that landed at Utah Beach D-Day, and he was serving with General George W. Patton in the Third Army. Now, not only did he was there as a gunner, he got five Purple Hearts, mm. two Bronze Stars, and that second Bronze Star had clusters. So. We, that, that we lost a man's man right there, not only a, a, a hero and an icon in our sport, but me as an American, you know, I stand up and salute, you know, a, a man from that generation that, in my opinion, saved the world. So, uh, bravo, uh, Mr. Bud Moore. Absolutely. Great, great tribute to Bud Moore. Great job, Mike. And you had a homework assignment since Monday. You're talking about charters, and you're going to educate our folks about charters and NASCAR. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, a little bit, because it came up last week. We know that... Um, uh, in, it came about in, in 2006 that there was an agreement between Race Team Alliance and NASCAR. Now, who is Race Team Alliance? Well, Race Team Alliance is a coalition started up a few years ago of 15 NASCAR Cup Series teams. And the idea was to have a business association, basically so that they could have one voice uh, to try to get uh, better revenues. Also, like when they were buying parts, if they went, they could get a better deal if all 15 of them went and that kind of stuff. And also to work with NASCAR on things that would help out the sport. Um, a charter is kind of like an NFL franchise, as it guarantees uh, the, whoever has that license holder an automatic entrance for the full season. So right now we have there's 36 charters. So it means there's 36 people that are locked into each race, and they usually have 40 is how many of the races. So a couple of those cars wind up racing in. Now, you can sell your charter. You can lease them. But if you don't drive uh, or you don't use it or you don't field a car one year, you're going to lose it. Uh, the latest example is uh, JTD Doherty just bought the number 77 charter uh, so that they could use it with their own Chris Busher. Now, I heard that they paid $2 million for this. Now, owners have been wanting this for a long time because – uh, it used to be you'd work hard, you'd race cars, and then if you got out of the sport, all you had was an empty garage and some cars. And the conversation really started back in the, in the 50s and 60s between Big Bill France, and I believe it was Junior Johnson. And Junior Johnson was trying to explain that he was committed to this sport and that he really had a stake in it and, you know, he wanted more. And Bill, Big Bill France was saying that he was using the, the, the term, well, you're participating in this. Well, they were at breakfast. And as they were sitting there at breakfast, a junior told Big Bill French, he said, well, look down at your plate right there. He said, you see those eggs right there? He said, that chicken was participating. He said, you see that bacon right there? He said, that pig was committed. He said, I'm committed, and I got my bacon on the line here. So it's been a long time coming, but that's what it comes down to. It's kind of uh, NASCAR's way of having, like, a franchise. So if you did... Uh, sell your, your company or whatever, you know, it's worth a little bit of something to you. But that's kind of how it works that I found out. That's an awesome report. Again, we're talking to Mike Hedrick, NASCAR fans reporter. So we wrapped up the season. What's next, and what do you want to leave us with here today? Well, I think uh, you know, we still got a lot that's going on this off season. There's just so much. I mean, by the time this weekend goes through, we'll have so much to talk about on Monday. I think now we can get back into really looking at that silly season, seeing what cars still are available, what drivers are still really interested in. And if I was going to leave everybody, hey, go hit the deli. It's 25% off all your meats and cheeses right there at Food City, Bristol, and all your locations. And you need a big, fat sandwich for the weekend, everybody. There you go. Great job, screen taters. Screen taters. God bless everybody real good. Woohoo! Good job. Talk to him Monday. My man Mike Hedrick does a superb job. Excellent job. Thank you, sir. It is very, very good, and he is concise and spot on. And so, yeah, Heather does a wonderful job. She's part of the 
uh, PA team at the Speedway, uh, Heather DeBow, and she is excellent. She and Jose, and of course, our buddy David McGee. So, yeah, we're very blessed to have some great folks working at Bristol Motor Speedway during race week with the announcing. And Heather's the young lady you see up on the screen all the time. And yeah, she's a good one. Excellent, excellent a announcer, and a, just a nice lady to be around, too. She is a uh, funny, funny young lady. Got a dry sense of humor and, and very cool. Quick break. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at college football. We're deciding a conference championship tonight. We've got a bunch of games tomorrow. We'll tell you all about that. High school football from yesterday in Tennessee. High school football going on today in Tennessee. State championship games. Yesterday it was the odd classes, one, three, and five. Today it's two, four, and six. And so we'll tell you who's playing and who's won yesterday, who's playing today. Uh, we got one going on coming up here. In fact, just got started in the 2A. Greenville plays at 4 o'clock today. We'll tell you all about that. Virginia, our two remaining teams out of Southwest Virginia playoffs for tomorrow and tonight. We'll tell you about that as well. And also college football. And we'll check and see if there's any other developments. Unbelievable. Any other developments going on again in Knoxville with the as Neyland Stadium turns. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We're live at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol. Show number 645 of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Live from, again, Virginia Avenue in Bristol. Monday we'll be in the lobby of Bristol Motor Speedway. Can't wait to hang out with Drew and Landon and all the folks up there again right down the road at Bristol Motor Speedway. Love hanging out with those folks. What an honor to work with these just class folks and Jerry Caldwell right on down. You don't get any better than the folks at Bristol Motor Speedway. Love hanging out with those folks. We'll be there on Monday, Tuesday. Movement Mortgage, the brand new open house. Again, their location right across from the Cracker Barrel on Boone's Creek will be there broadcasting live on Tuesday. Wednesday will be at the we call it the Chicken Coop, at Chick-fil-A, the Crossings in North Johnson City. Also, we're going to be on Thursday at Champion Chevrolet. And next Friday, Food City Friday, we'll be on the road at Food City on Eastman Road in Kingsport at Turtles, Turtle Store, Tommy Stanley Store, again on Eastman Road in Kingsport. Speaking of Chick-fil-A, don't forget, you can register to win two tickets to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl coming up New Year's Day in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, two tickets and meals. Here's how you enter by placing a mobile carryout order at the Chick-fil-A, The Crossings, in North Johnson City, catering order, including trays, or other ways you can be found on Facebook or Instagram by simply going to CFAJC. CFA, which, of course, is short for Chick-fil-A, J.C. Johnson City, CFAJC. The giveaway is going to be announced on this show on December the 20th. We'll be live at Chick-fil-A, The Crossings, in North Johnson City. So check it out how you can win a pair of tickets and free food to boot at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, January the 1st at 1230, New Year's Day in Atlanta. Quick break. We'll be right back. We've got more for you live again at Food City on Virginia Avenue on the Food City Friday, show number 645 of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. It's model your clothes out with Jim Employ pricing and 20% off on 17 models of Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. It's a great time to take advantage of closeout savings on our selection of over 300 Chevys to choose from. 17 1500 work truck 23995, 17 track 17548, 17 cruise 16488, 17 spark 10950, 17 Malibu 18985. Closeout savings, Saturday parts and service hours, and shopping online 24 7 will leave you asking, how do they do that? At American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the eight areas of your vehicle that takes constant continuing education is the air conditioner on your vehicle. Well, you would think that AC would be a simple one, but it's getting to be uh, a lot bigger than just AC. It's, it's the management of the system, not just AC, but heat and everything. It's a lot more computer controlled than it used to be. It used to be just a little button on the dash that you pushed. Now there's all kinds of electronics involved in that. Braking systems it used to be fairly simple. Now some of the newer vehicles you have to have a computer to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. 
it's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back at the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us again. Getting some feedback. Timothy Dottery. Interesting what he says here on the uh, on the page today. Throughout the entire process, coaching search. Phil Fulmer's tried to undermine AD John Curry in hopes of becoming the AD there. Interesting. Hey Bradley Purdy, how you doing, buddy? Uh, again, we appreciate everybody that's uh, again being with us here on the show and. We appreciate all the comments, and again, be sure and share the show. Put you in the running for uh, Bradley Purdy. Hello, Rebecca Grindstaff. Hello, and Tommy Whitley. Hello, and uh, let's see, Steve McCauley, our buddy from Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Hello to you, Carter Davison. Hello to you, young lady from Elizabethan, Tennessee. Again, don't forget the Elizabethan Christmas parades tomorrow night at six o'clock in downtown Elizabethan. You've got. King Sports Christmas Parade tomorrow night. You've got Johnson City Christmas Parade tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. So uh, we'll run those down for you here in just a second. I think it's worth Christmas Parade. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Johnson City is 1130 tomorrow. King Sports is at 5 o'clock tomorrow night. Mm, let's see. You have Elizabethans at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. So uh, let's see what else we got. The rest of them will be next week. So that's and we got also Bloomingdale's got their parade coming up tomorrow as well so uh big busy busy time to say the least and so again thanks for all the comments on the show appreciate it very much uh last night only thing we're going to tell you is dallas beat washington 38 14 we don't spend a lot of time about the nfl i will spend a lot of time on jason witten got got one catch eight yards for a touchdown his third catch this season here's the numbers on jason witten incredible 66 career touchdowns. The guy has made 1,139 catches in his career for 12,317 yards. That's incredible. He's averaging 11 yards a catch. Jason Witten, a certain Hall of Famer for sure. Uh, this guy, as I've told you throughout the week, the NCAA has named a Jason Witten Humanitarian Award after this young man because of what he has done off the field, which is incredible, and what a tribute. If you think of all the college football players that have come through, they name an award after this guy from Elizabethan. We should be, if, it doesn't, if, it, if the guy didn't catch another football, we should be very proud of Jason Witten just because of how he conducts himself off the field to the point where the NCAA is naming an award after him for what he has done for public service off the football field, off the gridiron. That's incredible. And so when he gets in here at Christmas, we're going to talk to him. I've got that set up. We're going to visit with Jason Witten, maybe get him to come out to the show, but definitely going to talk to him on the phone once the season's over. Anyway, Cowboys won last night, 38-14. Lots of empty seats. I love the NFL's excuse. Well, I mean, there's a lot. I saw an aerial shot of the stadium last night and lots and lots of empty seats in Dallas. 
It says, to be fair, Thursday games are always a little tricky with crowds. While not as bad as they are on the West Coast, where the start time is 525, it is certainly possible a crowd for a midweek game will be poorly attended. Nah, don't give me that garbage. The get, best guess is that most of these empty seats are because both the Redskins and Dallas are essentially out of the playoff race in the NFC. Nah, don't give me that garbage. Let me tell you why they're empty. Because, folks, Main Street America is sick of the garbage these divas are doing in the National Football League. And so, uh, whatever the reason, it says it's certainly not a picture anyone in the NFL wants to see. Well, exactly. So, they're making all these excuses. Why don't they come clean and say the NFL, this national anthem fiasco, has affected the attendance at the football games? I mean, everybody knows that. The TV ratings are down. And so, they're making excuses of the start time on a Thursday night game in Dallas. Or, well, the Cowboys are out of it and the Redskins are out of it. That may be true, but Dallas typically draws well whether they're winning or not. So, I'm not buying that. I think folks are over it. They're tired of it. And that's just, I'm like Forrest Gump. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I don't think it has anything to do with the start time in the NFL. It has a lot to do with all these overpaid. Anyway, don't get me started. I'm not going to get started. Anyway, they're saying that not a lot of folks there. Jason went and got a touchdown pass last night, and I think that guy is top shelf in my book. They are going to be in college football today deciding a Pac-12 championship tonight, a uh, college conference championship. The Pac-12, as we said, Stanford 9-3, and three, Southern Cal 10-2. They'll play that one in Santa Clara, California. That will be for the Pac-12 championship. Tomorrow, the AAC championship, Memphis, Memphis, baby, 10-1 and one in Central Florida, the Battle of the Black Knights, or 11-0. That will be a noon kickoff. The Conference USA championship, Laugh if you want, but Lane Kiffin, Florida Atlantic, and Lane Kiffin playing for the Conference USA Championship in his first season. They're 9-3, and three, North Texas at 9-3. and three. They'll play that one in Florida tomorrow. The uh, SEC Championship at 4 o'clock, Georgia 11-1, Auburn 10-2 and two in Atlanta. Georgia wins that game, in my humble opinion. ACC Championship, Clemson 11-1, and one, taking on Miami 10-1. and one. Play that one in Charlotte tomorrow night, 8 o'clock kickoff. Everybody says it's Clemson. I don't know. Miami's a pretty stout football team. Clemson, uh, the defending national champions, trying to get back into that Final Four and stay there. And, of course, they're the number one team right now in the Final Four. That's a tough call there. I'm going to lean. I guess going to lean with Dabo, although I like Mark Richt a lot. I think he's a class act. And by the way, he conducts himself off the field with his uh, Christianity. He doesn't just. Talk the talk. He walks the walks. I like the guy. ACC championship. Again, Clemson, Miami. That will be coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Also, the Big Ten championship tomorrow night from Indianapolis. Ohio State, the Buckeyes, 10-2. and Wisconsin, 12-0. and I'm about to break Dave Martin's heart here in a few minutes from WLW Radio in Cincinnati. He's going to join us coming up here in just a few. He loves the Buckeyes. Buckeyes aren't going to win tomorrow or tomorrow night. Put it down right here, I'm telling you. Uh, MAC championship, Mid-American Conference, noon tomorrow. Toledo, 10 and 2. The Rockets taking on the Akron Zips. That's the coolest nickname game going. The Rockets against the Zips. Toledo, 10 and 2. Akron, 7 and 5. That's in Detroit tomorrow at noon. Big 12 championship, 12 30 tomorrow. It will be Texas Christian, the Horn Frogs at 10 and 2, taking on Oklahoma. The Sooners at 11 and 1. Also, the Southwest Athletic Conference Championship tomorrow. Alcorn State, 7-4. and four. Grambling State, 10-1. They'll play that one in Houston at 4-30 tomorrow. Also, the Mountain West Conference Championship. Boise State, 9-3. and three At Fresno State, 9-3. and three At 7:45 tomorrow night. So, that's what's going on in college football. So, you got some good ones tomorrow. And so... It uh, starts tonight at the 8 o'clock kickoff, Stanford and Southern Cal. What else happening in sports and baseball? The Giants might be getting to the next level in their efforts to trade for Marlins slugger John Carlos Stanton. Earlier yesterday, we learned the Marlins were reportedly prepared to accept the Giants' offer. Stanton has a full no-trade clause, which means he must be persuaded to approve a trade to the Giants. So... Uh, the Giants are getting serious now, getting ready to open up the checkbook. The Dodgers are very interested in him as well. Uh, I think the Cardinals may have cooled off. Maybe the Red Sox have cooled off a little bit. But primarily right now, it would appear, at least today on December the 1st, it's a two-horse race for his services with the Giants. are coming off a 98-loss season last year, needing some offense, obviously, or the Dodgers. The Dodgers just wanting to kind of shore up what already is a very good football or baseball team, rather. So we'll see. But 
Giancarlo Stanton uh, getting ready to make a move to one of the two teams that appear. And maybe another one coming out of the woodwork, but it looks like now it's two horse race, as we said, with the Giants and the Dodgers for the services of Mr. Stanton. Volleyball, East Tennessee State closer to home, playing at Kentucky tonight in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Good luck to, again, the Lady Bucks taking on the Lady Wildcat volleyball team tonight in Lexington at 730. Johnson City Cardinals got the man they wanted. He was Cardinals general manager, formally introduced in a press conference yesterday that at the Carnegie Hotel in Johnson City, the 27-year-old Zach Clark previously served as the Appalachian League baseball team's assistant general manager before leaving for the Asheville Tours last season. So uh, he's back in the fold, and we'll have him on the show soon. Zach Clark, the general manager of the Johnson City Cardinals, back in the fold again after leaving and now coming back after our buddy Tyler left to go to the Lansing Lugnuts baseball team in Michigan. High school basketball tonight. Conference opener. Here's some of the games going on tonight. The big rivalry game, Dobbins Minute at Science Hill in Johnson City. Boone and Crockett, the Washington County rivalry will reignite and fire back up in Jonesboro tonight. Sullivan South plays at Sullivan Central. Tennessee High at Sullivan East. Elizabeth and the Cyclones hosting Johnson County tonight. Happy Valley, Unicoi County, and Cosby at Unica. That's both guys and girls basketball tonight. The conference openers for the respective teams here in Northeast Tennessee. So uh, it's going to be a big night tonight in high school basketball. And, of course, none bigger than Dobbins Minute and Science Hill at the Topper Gym in Johnson City. Tom Taylor Sports Show. Again, we are live at Food City. Before we go to the break and pull up our buddy Dave Martin from WLW Radio in Cincinnati, here's some more of those specials again today. One day celebration at all food cities. John and Gold Apples. Man, they are out of this world. Very, very good. New York grown John and Gold Apples. Five pound bag. Limit two per person. Two ninety nine a bag with your Food City value card. Nabisco vanilla wafers. $1.99 a box. Limit two. Duncan Hines Classic Cake Mix, 89 cents a box, limit four. Pure X Laundry Detergent, liquid form, limit four per person, $1.99 per bottle. Food Club Apple Juice or Apple Cider, 64-ounce bottle, 99 cents. Food Club Orange Juice, 59-ounce container for $1.69, limit two. Food Club Large Eggs, 18 to a carton, grade A white, $1.99, limit two. Van Camp's Chili with Beans, 15-ounce can, limit six per person, 99 cents a can. Over on this side of the fantastic Friday one-day celebration, California Seedless Naval Oranges, four-pound bag, limit two, two ninety-nine with your Food City Value card. All varieties of meat or cheese in the deli service case sold per pound, 25% off today only. That's a great deal. A fourth off of all the meats and cheese in the deli service area. Tyson Naturals. Frozen Tyson Naturals or grilled chicken, four ninety nine dollars a, a bag, limit two. Folgers Coffee, 31-ounce container for four ninety nine, dollars And out of the meat department, Holly Farms Boneless Chicken Breast, $1.69 a family pack per pound. And Food City Fresh Holeless Boneless Pork, Boneless Pork One, I should say, $1.69 a pound. And again, Kellogg's Pop-Tarts, 12 to a box, limit two boxes per person. $1.99. Two more specials before we go to the break. Coca-Cola products, 24-pack, 12-ounce cans, two for 10. And Cottonelle bath tissue, 12 rolls, or Viva paper towels, six rolls, two for 10 at your local Food City till midnight tonight. Quick break. We'll be right back. We're live here at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol, Tennessee. Coming up next, we'll hear from our buddy Dave Martin riding away with Dave with WLW Radio in Cincinnati. He joins us next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable 
with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. This holiday season, those of us at Phil's Dream Pit here would like to make it easy for you to entertain your guests and visitors with our Dream Packs to go. We have pork, chicken, or brisket, and the sides. All Dream Packs come with three sides, the buns or toast, and the sauce. We can do these value packs from anywhere from four up to 50 to 100 people, just depending on how many you have to feed. Call about the Dream Packs to go at Phil's Dream Pit, 349-6437. If you're catching some waves or just playing in the yard, it is important to protect yourself. You may not feel the sun's heat, but UV rays can still damage your skin even in cloudy weather. Blue Lizard Sunscreen, recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide. Our SPF 30-plus formulations use only the highest quality ingredients for broad-spectrum protection. As a reminder to protect yourself, our bottle turns blue when UV light is present. Blue Lizard. We've got you covered. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. Back on the Tom Douglas Sports Show, let's go to the phone. He's there. He's our buddy live in Cincinnati, Ohio, on WLW Radio, riding away with Dave. We'll be with him tomorrow night. My man, Dave Martin, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm wonderful. The sun's shining and everything looks good, and we're going to get that big tax tax relief from uh, Donald J. Trump, and, uh, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I want you to go back. This is not a political show, but I want you to go back and watch the entire, when he did the tree lighting, I guess it was last night in Washington, and yeah. gave his Merry yeah. Christmas salutations. The guy was spot on. Of course, you know, the liberal media just cut uh, a few things here, a few things there. Didn't really get into letting the whole thing. But he was very pointed in his comments. And I, I was, I was, uh, I thought it was pretty cool. He spoke a lot about Christmas and, and the real meaning of Christmas. Yeah. And I was very good. So, yeah, the tree lighting last night, uh, they're all over the, the first lady about how she's decorated the White House. I don't care what she's done. It would have been wrong. But, uh it, yeah, it, it's interesting. The folks have been pointing fingers at everybody, at Trump and all this during the election. Now, what goes around comes around. They've been in a little bit of trouble of their own with some of their uh, yeah. escapades. So, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, it's more more an esca- escapade. I mean, I think everybody's <laughs> finding out that the Democrats, a bunch of sexual uh, deviants and uh, perverts or preverts. I don't know if you're allowed to say perverts exactly. So we'll, we'll call them preverts. But uh, yeah, Matt Lauer and his whole crew and a bunch of the NPR boys, they're all in trouble. And of course, you know about Al Frank. Frank, everybody knew he was a creep from the day one. So uh, yeah, nothing never, surprising. Never should, have, never should have never went down this road. I flipped the switch, my man. <laughs> Riding away with Dave. I love it. So. Well, I just tell it like it is and let the chips fall where they may. So, well, let's go talk sports because I mean, you were having a little conversation about how many times that I mean you've crossed swords, and I think I've won uh, ten out of eleven. So, I haven't put the mark of the Z on you yet, like Zero does to Sergeant Garcia. That's because you're my buddy and stuff yeah. like that. But I've just toyed with you a little bit there. But I know you wanted to get into the Wisconsin and Buckeyes, so um, you like the Wisconsin Badgers, right? 
what was good off air, I was telling Dave, we were getting along real good, and we were being chippy and happy, and he said, well, we'll talk about the Buckeyes. They won't have any problems with Wisconsin. I said, oh, no, Wisconsin's going to beat them. It was just total silence. He said, well, okay, let's just get on there and talk about it. So <laughs> I flipped the switch. So, yeah, so let's talk it. about it. Oh. Well, see, you're, for, you're forgetting a few things. I mean, this is almost like a NASCAR thing. I mean, first of all, what kind of track are they playing on there, uh, the Hoosier Dome? Artificial surface. Yeah, fast track, right? Right, right. In, in, in w- which team's built for speed? And sure in hell ain't them big hogs up there at Wisconsin, I can tell you that. So <laughs> that ought to be your first clue. Uh, it's a nice setting for the Buckeyes because the Buckeyes are a speed team. And I think Urban Meyer, he's been quoted even as saying this is probably the fastest team he's ever had. Now, I'll give you one thing. Their linebackers are probably about the worst set of linebackers uh, in, in about 15 years as far back as I can re- really remember a bunch of the guys. And uh, But I, Wisconsin, I mean, they're going to have to try to run the ball and muscle the Buckeyes. But, you know, the Buckeyes' strength, I've been telling you all years, they've got eight guys they can pretty much interchange up there in the defensive <laughs> line. I think two of the guys – first team all big 10 so i've been right dead on the money on that uh i think the linebackers will be able to play good enough because they are fast they're just kind of stupid but uh you know can't cover tight ends coming out of the back backfield right in front of them but i think uh urban and get that straightened around their defense backs are pretty strong so i don't think it'd be a 59 nothing whooping from about uh what was that three years ago when they played in in the championship thing was the buckeyes against wisconsin so uh, and I think the Las Vegas odds maker, they're on my side, uh, the six point favorite for the Buckeyes. But, uh, okay. yeah, the, the biggest question, the biggest question marks could be a high state's quarterback. Cause one of the Michigan cameramen tried to take him out last week on the sideline and, and banged up his knee. And then he didn't saw what happened. We had another super sub at quarterback where Tennessee could use one of those Buckeye quarterbacks. That's another story. We could use but, a coach. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, coach, they had a chance to get the coach, but the stupid ass fans didn't want him and stuff because of some rumor mill and stuff like that. But uh, Tennessee would get, uh, get him a decent coach. I'd get one of those young bucks uh, uh, down there and throw a bunch of money at him and get him to come in there and rejuvenize that uh, program. I think that'd be the w- winning ticket for uh, Tennessee. But no, I think the Buckeyes, they've got a not too much talent, and the receivers are playing a lot better. I told you they would get better as the seasons went along. Of course, that made. J.T. Barrett looked pretty good, and he won the Big Ten quarterback of the year. Uh, I think it was off, maybe offensive player or whatever, so he's another big award winner. He's been giving up points this year, so uh, there's no question. I think Wisconsin will score some, but I think in the long run, uh, with the way the field sets up and everything sets up, Urban Meyer's got a, a grudge anyhow against uh, Wisconsin, and you know this is the first time they've been back in the championship game for a couple years, so I don't think he wants to uh, lay an egg in any way, shape, or form. So I look for the Buckeyes to roll. The only other question is uh, your, your other teams, who else is going to be in there? I think uh, George is going to surprise uh, Auburn. I really do. It's it's tough to play two big games like that back-to-back, and uh, George has probably got a little bit of an edge down there in the Georgia Dome, wouldn't you say? All right, let's run down these real quick. I'm talking today because he's – Obviously hallucinating. He got some sleep last night, so he is picking. Yeah, oh, not was... really, but I, 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 I'm. All, I, but I'm always about noon. I'm always firing in all cylinders. So, all right, yeah, you're, you're uh, taking Ohio State. Go ahead. Tell me, uh, you got Ohio State, Georgia, Auburn. Who do you like? Yeah, I like Georgia. I like the the Bulldoggies. I think uh, they've got a, a better team, and uh, Auburn, you know, ha- had their big game last week against Alabama. And, Alabama maybe had got shown. Well, they looked pretty tough against Mercers and all those uh, sisters of the poor, but they went up against a strong team, you know, at, at, on the road, and they laid a big eggs. But uh, I think the Georgia Bulldogs have pulled that game out. All right. Got a couple of minutes left here. I got my man waiting in the wings here from Food City. Miami yeah. Clemson, ACC championship. Miami or Clemson, who do you like? Yeah, I think Clemson. I think Clemson's pretty uh, – pretty tough i mean they pretty much got you know 80 percent of their team from last year and everybody knows uh, what kind of team they have i i would i would have to go with clemson although you know miami you know they're one of those teams you know they play a lot on emotion if they got some early scores could be a tough ball game i think clemson end up handling them got two more tonight they play tonight stanford southern cal pac 12 championship you like stanford or the trojans well, you know, I, I really haven't had a chance to get out there in the West Coast. They're a little squirrely out there anymore anyhow. So, 
you know, I, I guess he'd probably go with Southern Cal because uh, they're definitely the, the better team on paper. And Stanford, right. you know, like I say. I'm writing these all down. We've got one more. We've got the Big okay. 12 championship, the Horned Frogs of Texas Christian, and the Oklahoma Sooners. Who do you like there? Yeah, I'd probably have to go with Oklahoma. I, I haven't uh, seen TCU play. I, I know that they're one of those teams that can score a lot of points, but uh, Oklahoma's probably going to have the Heisman uh, quarterback there. And like you said, they got the big horses up front, and uh, they, they got a pretty smart coach and stuff. It's too big of a game for Oklahoma to blow. So I think they should control tempo and, and just keep running the ball right on down uh, uh, TCU because they're not known for defense out there anyhow, any of those teams out there in, in the West. They're all about offense, but uh, I'd have to say Oklahoma. So it's really going to come down to who's going to be the final four teams to make the uh, playoff, and mm-hmm. I guess it's going to come down if the Buckeyes win like I predict and Alabama's sitting there in the wings, who's going to be that number four team? Is it going to be Alabama or the Buckeyes? It's going to be Alabama 11-1 and one because the Buckeyes have played a soft schedule, so it'll be Alabama all the way. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Now, I, I know you haven't been drinking your cappuccino or nothing like it. Buckeyes just got done beating Penn State, Michigan State, yeah. uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. and, and if they top, they knock off undefeated Wisconsin, <laughs> I mean, come on. And, and, and I could go down uh, the Mickey Mouse Club that Alabama tangled with and stuff, and you, I don't know if you'd find one team better than any of those four or five I just rattled off, but, you know. We're talking the That's ride okay. you got to do it. We're talking yeah. around the way with Dave here. We're live again. We got him for a few more minutes. I'm about 60 seconds left here. The Cavaliers yeah. have won 10 in a row. They're 15 and 7. They're getting it together. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, that's another great prediction I made with you. And you were see, singing doom and gloom for the poor Cavs and LeBron this, LeBron that, and stuff. I said, wait, wait a minute. I said, the boys didn't even have a preseason. They just, you know, got to know each other and, you know, uh, uh, Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron caught up on old times and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, the Cavs are hitting on all cylinders. And just like I predicted, they were going to have to start playing some defense. And that's really what's propelled the, the Cavs is they've started to play some good, tough D. And, uh, I told you they've got a strong bench. They've been going to the bench. And, you know, Derek Rose right now, he's hadn't been around. And I guess he's singing the blues. And this question whether he's going to keep playing or he's talking about hanging it up, I don't think he should because he's got that big shoe contract. And he, he loses out on about $80 million if he decides to retire. But, um, yeah, the Cavs are looking good. And then they got that little spark plug. Remember that the big trade was about getting that Isaiah – uh, Thomas and, uh, he's rehabbing and stuff and starting to feel his oats and feeling pretty good, but you know, they're going to keep the reins off him, I think, till after the first of the year, but he comes back and it's going to add another, uh, offense weapon there for the Cavs. But, uh, the Cavs are going to, uh, barring any injuries, I think rounded into shape, although they're going to have some real competition this year in the East looks like with Boston because Kyrie Irving has definitely got those guys playing pretty tough. But, uh, I told you the Cavs will be there when it's all said and done. There you go. My man riding away with Dave. I love to poke him like a big old bear. We'll join each other tomorrow night yeah, at, yeah. at midnight, and I'm looking forward to being on your show tomorrow night. I'll tell us where we can find you, my friend. Oh, yeah, 700 WLW, America's Trucking Network. I'll be on for the midnight ride, midnight to 5 a.m., so I guess I better get a little bit of shut-eye so I can uh, be good for that. I got tonight off, but I'll be on there tomorrow night. Of course, you're going to be on with me, so we'll have a chance right there at midnight to uh, – talk about all the games and see how they turned out and uh, see whether there's uh, any tears falling down from your – make sure you got your uh, your little hanky there and stuff so that, you know, <laughs> when we're talking and stuff, you could wipe the teardrops down. Dave, you done, done it to me again. You, you, you spliced me with that big sword you carry. And <laughs> there you go. Get it's you all some... fun. It's all in... – Oh, yeah. Get you some rest. I'll talk to you tomorrow yeah. night, all right? Okay, sounds good. Ha- have a good time. Enjoy your uh, – it's Friday night and Saturday. Okay, I'll see you, Tommy. Thanks. All right. Great Bye. job, my man Dave Martin again in Cincinnati. Here's the very latest what's going on in Knoxville. If you are interested, and we're going to get Eric on here in just a second, but uh, let's go ahead and get him on right now. Let me tell you the very latest. Uh, Curry flies back to Knoxville after interviewing Washington State coach Mike Leach. University officials told Curry not to go broker deal with Leach or anybody else prior to returning to campus, so he did anyway. Uh, apparently he met with Leach and source told ESPN the two sides haven't negotiated and a deal is not imminent. So he went out against, uh, against the wishes of the university of Tennessee brass and said, we don't want you out here cutting any kind of deals. 
get on a plane and fly back. Well, he went ahead and interviewed Mike Leach, the coach from Washington State, who, by the way, as I said earlier, he's 38 and 37 on the season. I mean, in his career, not exactly, to me, a successful coach. So sources have now said that former Hall of Fame coach Phil Fulmer, now serving as a special advisor to the university president, will take a more active role in helping Tennessee land the coach. Volunteers' new coach will be their fifth in the past 11 years. And so, uh, let's see, anything else going down through here? His buyout, by the way, is 5.5. Curry agreed to a five-year contract worth about $900,000 a year. According to the terms of Curry's contract, the school would owe him $5.5 million if he is fired without cause. And they did. They fired him without cause. So I guess he's going to get a check for $5.5 million. He can come to Food City and buy a lot of groceries for $5.5 million, can he? Oh, he sure could. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Eric's with us, the Food City store manager in Virginia Avenue. And so that's the very latest. Uh, apparently, he went against the wishes. The athletic department went out there and interviewed Mike Leach of Washington State. I don't understand why he would. The guy's 38 and 37. I mean, that's not a very – before this year, he was 20 – what I say it was? He was 29 and 34 as a coach. Before this year, he's 9 and 3 this year. How, how do you go out and hire coaches that don't have a winning record? I mean, in all seriousness, you can go get uh, Tennessee House coach, who, Mike, Mike Mays. Mike Mays, Graham Clark at DB, Stacy Carter at Science Hill, Sean Whitten at Elizabeth. I mean, I'm, I know it sounds silly, but if you want to go hire coaches that have a losing record, how, how are you bettering your football program? Well, you're not, obviously. But So Leach went out there, or rather Curry went out and interviewed Leach. They told him not to. He flies back home, and they fired him this morning. So, And now he says Philip Former is undermining the whole thing. Former has been trying to run him off from the beginning since he didn't get the job to start with. And it is like a soap opera. Now. It's like better than – remember the old Dallas TV show with Jr. and Bobby yeah. and Sue Ellen? And it's, that's what it's, I mean, it's like a, a Dallas TV soap opera. It's, it's unbelievable. It is embarrassing. You nailed it. <laughs> Hit the bell. It is very embarrassing. But what's not embarrassing is this one-day sale, Fantastic Friday. Eric Sandifer, you see on the screen, our Food City store manager, in the closing moments here of the show. And tell us what we got going on, my friend. Well, we've got a Fantastic Friday one-day sale-a-thon celebration going on. And- Today only, and we've got some really hot ads, some good hot items for the holiday season coming up. And then we'll start out. We got whole pineapples, 99, 99 cents each. 24 pack food club spring water, dollar 99. What you can see behind him here, stocked up on the pallet. Go ahead. Uh, Folgers coffee, the country roast coffee, 4.99. Coca-Cola 24 pack products, two for 10. Um, 18 count food club large eggs, dollar ninety nine. Jonah Gold apples, five pound bag for two ninety nine. Love Jonah Gold apples. Yep, they're Man, great they're good. Apples. Oh, slice and put a little peanut butter on them. Woo, I like them. Um, you know we've got di- just a, a host of things on sale today. Food club orange juice, dollar sixty nine for a 50, 50, 59 ounce carton. Um, Four pound bag navel oranges, two ninety nine. Just a, a, a lot of things going on at Food City today. Absolutely, whole pineapples. You sell a lot of pineapples, don't you? We sell a lot of pineapples, and this is a time. This is a season for pineapples, not to, just for eating purposes, but for the hams and mm-hmm. all that. Whole pineapples for ninety nine cents. Nella wafers, got them. Man, put some peanut butter on Nella wafers and get a big old glass of milk. It's cold, make your teeth hurt. That's good right there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a, country. That's good country. Oh, right there. baby, I love that. That's good stuff. <laughs> John and Gold Apples, we talked about that because those are good for you. Coming out of New York State, uh, we mentioned the large eggs before, but you've got Hostess Twinkies and apple juice and, or cider and Food Club orange juice. Tell me about those. There again, just a lot of good items for, for a one-day ad. I mean, the Hostess Twinkies, got them for $1.99 mm-hmm. a box. You got the... Apple juice or apple, or apple cider, 99 cents today for a 64-ounce container. Uh, orange juice, got a 59-ounce container of orange juice for $1.69. You limit two on that. That's, uh, that's a hot item. With all the sicknesses going around today. Mm-hmm. Nothing better than it's a good class of orange juice. Some vitamin C. You yep. got it. That's all at all the stores until midnight tonight. Store closing over 130 stores in four states. And we're here again this week. Virginia Avenue in Bristol. Love coming up here. This guy's fun to hang out with. And so we'll be at Food City on Eastman Road next week. That'll be a Tommy store. A Tommy Stanley, the Turtle Man. 
We call him Turtle because when he goes fishing, he said he said he never catches fish, always catches snapping turtles. So I just started calling him Turtle. It's kind of stuck. And then uh, two weeks will be at Food City in Blumville. At it's went totally blank. Strickland, Steve, Steve Strickland store will be there in a couple of weeks. So we love hanging out at Food City. We go out every week and talk about the great savings of Food City. Let's talk about dinners. Let's folks are planning dinners. Today's first. You got about three weeks to be planning dinners and. We talked about this over Thanksgiving, but you've got turkeys, you got chicken, you got ham dinners. Tell us about those. Well, you know, you, for, for all your holiday needs, you just need to come by Food City and see one of us. You know, our, all of our departments specialize in these. And, you know, you can get everything from your turkey dinner to your spiral ham dinner to party trays, fruit, vegetable party trays, shrimp trays. We, you can get it all here. I mean, there, there's very few things you can't get, you get here that to get prepared for your holiday dinners or for your Christmas parties coming up over the next few weeks. and I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's the magazine you can get here. There's a classic turkey dinner, the smoked turkey dinner, the turkey breast dinner, rotisserie chicken dinner, and the spiral ham dinner. All those available here at, of course, all food cities. Then, as Eric was talking about the party trays, you've got which one do you sell, you sell a bunch of? What's the most popular tray well, you got? Probably one of our most popular is the country brunch, which is country ham biscuits, mm. or the chicken tender bite. The chicken tenders. Okay, let me show you those. Those are the chicken tender, the barbecue meatball trays, the country brunch you alluded to, the buffalo wings, the meat and cheese medley, the cheese taster. All these available again at Food City. And then over on this side, you've got the party trays. Let's hit those for them real quick. And, Eric, you've got the petite chicken salad croissants. You've got the sub sandwiches, the finger sandwiches, and the deli wraps. Uh, there again, the chicken salad is probably one of our favorites. And the deli wraps are, are are one of the top sellers. If you haven't got out to try those, you need to come by and try it out. So if you're in a hurry and you don't have time to make it yourself, then all you got to do is call. And I want him to talk about the barnyard special. You're talking about something good. I'm going to show us up on the uh, get it hot or cold. There's some more of the different. These are tailgate specials. But the barnyard special, 16 pieces of chicken, baked or fried. Two rotisserie chickens, choice of two pounds of potatoes, a potato salad, macaroni salad, or coleslaw salads, plus 12 dinner rolls. That'll feed somebody, won't it? That'll take care of your, of your, <laughs> of your hunger needs, for sure. <laughs> they got the fresh fruit medley tray. They got the garden spot medley tray with cauliflower and carrots and celery sticks and broccoli. They got the candy trays. They got the cheese and fruit trays. So as, as Eric said, there's really and truly. And then over on this side, you've got the medium shrimp. Let me show those real quick. The medium shrimp, large cooked, I uh, see, medium shrimp and crab tray, the medium cooked shrimp tray, the large cooked shrimp tray, the large shrimp and crab tray, all that available again at Food City. I and mean, it goes on and on and on again at Food City. And then, of course, uh, another part of this, let me show this real quick. And Eric's going to talk about the pharmacy. Let's talk about uh, the, if you got a sweet tooth. Whew, look at that Reese's cake. Oh, baby. Chocolate cake iced with creamy peanut butter icing and accented with chocolate cake crumbs and mini Reese cup candy. Lousy, mercy, that looks good. Coconut cake, German chocolate cake, carrot cake, red velvet cake. I love to have me a German chocolate cake. I ain't had one of those in a long time. There's the specialty cakes. Here are the custom cakes. Here are the, and even the cookies. I got my finger covered up and you get a cookie. I mean, really and truly, go to foodcity.com. There is nothing, I don't know, anything you can't help folks with, is it? And you got to remember all of our candies, homemade, fresh to store. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick way to get all your holiday needs. And you can order sure. online now, right? Oh, yeah. Foodcity.com. Take care of all your floral floral or bakery needs online. Yep. And let's see. Let's do that, too. I know there's a page in here that shows the centerpieces. This is a very nice. Here we go. Look right here. For Christmas, Christmas centerpieces, or even Thanksgiving, if you want to use the same color scheme. But here's the Christmas centerpieces. Look here, i got Handsome Eric right beside the centerpieces and the Thanksgiving centerpieces. Then we're going to flip it over here, and we're going to show you if I don't get my big fingers in the way. All these different vases that you can get for flowers to score some brownie points for the holidays. And so Poinsettia's got those as well. And then the pharmacy. Let's talk about the pharmacy of Food City. You know, I, I can't go on enough about our pharmacy. That's something we never had before till we opened a new store. And, you know, guys, you can get out and check out our, check out our pharmacy. We've got... Two awesome pharmacists, Amanda Hopkins and Sean Rader. They're absolutely the best, and they're a pleasure to deal with. And I think, you know, people would really be surprised on 
on on the service they got over at our pharmacy. Flu shots. You guys administer flu shots. We sure do, Dave. I got mine this year and didn't even feel it. Couldn't believe it. I was terrified of needles. And Amanda gave me one and didn't pass out or anything. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's good. A lot of folks, hey, let's face it, even adults, a lot of adults are a little leery of needles. So they made it very easy for you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Great, great. Two great pharmacists. That's a really good team. Yep. And so anytime you've got any kind of problem to any, you go to the any food city and say, look, i got this going on. i got this. I know a lady went, she came up to me when I was down in Gray and just bragged on the pharmacy because her kid had pink eye and went up to the pharmacist there in Gray and asked about the pink eye. And the lady gave her the, the drops to the pharmacist and was very nice with it and stepped her through and the whole thing. And, and that's what you get. You get it up here, too, at your store, too. It's called oh, customer service. Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. and... and you know, I, I just can't go on about enough about the pharmacy, but the whole store. I've got a lot of excellent employees, and they re that's what they like to do is take care of customers. How many folks you have here employed? I have about 125 employees. 125 employees. Wow. A lot of folks taking care of your needs, again, at Food City on Virginia Avenue in Bristol. And so I want to wrap this thing up by talking about school bucks. That's something even on the holidays, you're doing all your shopping for the, for the Christmas season now and even New Year's, but certainly Christmas, uh, you can – uh, generate money, for lack of a better term, some revenue for an individual school or schools through school bucks. Tell me about that. Hey, well, that's a, you know that's something that makes me proud to work for Food City. Steve Smith is always giving back to the community, and this mm -hmm. is just another way of doing it. Just make sure when you come in the store, tell the cashier which school you'd like to have signed up to get your school buck points, and the rest. That's all you have to do. It's a one-time deal, and then every time you're in a Food City and scan your VA card and scan the items through, those points are automatically sent to that school of your choice. And nothing else has to do to it except let the school accumulate the points. And then first year, we, we get to hand out checks. And you and passed out checks, didn't you? We just passed out checks uh, this past month. Give me some amounts you passed out. Let folks know how serious this is because you're making, uh, raising some lot of money. All the, uh, most of the schools I had were right here in Bristol, Tennessee, and most of them were, were – over two thousand dollars, all the way up to uh, a little bit over four thousand dollars for one school. Four thousand dollars. You hand them a check; they can use it as they need it. They can use it for anything that, that their school's needs. It's incredible. So. And here's the beauty of this too, because I travel a lot, and so if I'm down in Chattanooga, if I'm in Kentucky, wherever I'm at, I swipe that Food City Value card, then. The points are accrued at any food city I shop at. So it's not just you got to come into Bristol, this store, wherever you get signed up at. Nope, it's good at any store. It's good at any store. And it all, wherever, you, wherever you're at, it goes back to the school of your choice. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you my food city value card right now on the screen. I don't guess I've ever done this, but it's, uh, it's a credit card, of course. There it is, a food city value card. That opened the door to a lot of things, and it's good at any food city, 130-plus stores in four states. And so, and the code, you say, well, how do they know my school's code? They've got a book at the, at the register, and you scan through, and each school has their own code, right? Each school has their own code, and yep. each cashier has a, a book at the register with every school that participates listed yep. throughout all four states. So, so you come in and go, okay, I want to go – XYZ school, here's your code number. It's, I think it's a five digit code, one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is. Boom, she puts it in. From there on out for the rest of the time, so your school gets credit when you shop. It's a one time deal. And that's oh, yeah. It. It's a no brainer. And I mean, I think we've appropriated this year $750,000. $750,000. $750,000. And, and so he's given away checks $4,000, $2,000 to the schools. And again, they can use it any way they need to buy. Whatever they got to buy, it's just. Hand them a check, and they use it as they need it, so to buy whatever supplies they need. Need stuff, school bucks, and so that goes on till April of next year. So good stuff. What do you want to leave us with today, big guy? You're going to wrap up the show. You're closing it down. Well, you know, you know, make sure everybody, I'd like to see everybody get out and hit check out our new food city out here on Virginia Avenue. So we've only been open for about a year and a half. I think a lot of people that haven't been here will be surprised of the beautiful new facilities mm -hmm. we got. And, Looks let's, brand new to me. Let's hope we find us a coach sometime in the near future. Well, <laughs> just in case they don't, before we close here, I'm going to go ahead and lay this contract out in front of Eric Aikman. If you'll sign that right here, you're, I want you to go ahead and sign it. He is going to be, just in case they don't find one, Gary, <laughs> he has signed it. The new coach, there it is. He has signed it. You see it right here. He's the new coach of Tennessee football. 
What do you want me to pay? What, what's your pay? What's your pay rate? What do you want? Uh, money is no object in Knoxville, apparently. They're just throwing money yeah, left I mean, and right. I mean, you know, a couple million is not bad to ask for. Okay. Two million? <laughs> there you go. We now have a new coach. Call ESPN. We've got it. Eric Sandifer, the new coach of Tennessee, $2 million a year. And then, of course, how they set this up, his buyout contract. I'm his agent. If you fire him, he's getting $8 million. Is that good? That works for me. We'll split it 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> it probably wouldn't take long to get that 8 million. No. <laughs> there you go. Hey, man, I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, great guy. Love coming up to his store. He runs a nice store up here. They all do, but he does a really nice job, and I appreciate him very, very much. And, again, as he said, you can't get all these great specials today until midnight at all food cities across the chain, and so we appreciate him very much. Again, coming up today, high school football state championships. They're playing as we speak. Tyner in Union City in 2A, 4A football coming up. Good luck to the Greenville Green Devils at 14-0, trying to win the 4A state championship against Springfield. That one being played as they all are, Tennessee Tech and Cookville. And then tonight, the Maribel Rebels at 13-1, taking on Cane Ridge at 13-1. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff tonight from Tennessee Tech and Cookville. And then in Virginia, uh, tomorrow, Chihuahua takes on Galax, Chihuahua 10 and 3, Galax 10 and 3. And then Union will battle in Class 2 at 13 and 0, Union hosting Appomattox. They're 12 and 1. That's a 3 o'clock kickoff tomorrow. So good luck to the teams in Southwest Virginia as well. And certainly the Greenville Green Devils trying to bring back a state championship to Northeast Tennessee later on this afternoon. Hey, we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. It's a crazy morning with the, with the turn of events continuing in Tennessee. Again, Curry, the very latest, fired this morning by the chancellor, flew to the West Coast, interviewed Mike Leach. He was told not to. Uh, they're not interested in Mike Leach. He went and interviewed him anyway, and so now he's gone. Uh, there's rumblings from the Curry camp that Philip Fulmer's undermined him from the get-go, trying to get him fired. They're the buyout clause of John Curry is $5.5 million as the athletic director at Tennessee. Then on top of that, you got to pay Butch Jones to get him out and his assistants. They're going to talk. That's going to cost around $12 million to get them all out of there and replace them with a new coach. you got to pay him. So uh, it's just craziness. And so uh, the kicker is, and the sad part, as we said here on a little past 1 o'clock on right before 1 o'clock, I guess it is now, on no, a little past 1 o'clock on November, I'm sorry, December the 1st, 2000. And 17, we have no athletic director and no head coach, and the recruiting season is in full force. So we'll see how it rolls, see what they come up with between now and Monday when we'll rejoin you at Bristol Motor Speedway. So for Mike Hedrick, the NASCAR fans reporter, Dave Martin, WLW, riding away with Dave in Cincinnati. Also, of course, Kevin Harmon for the UT football update, and Eric Sandifer, as you see, the food city manager here. Uh, this is Tom Taylor telling you we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. Enjoy your weekend. It's going to be a mild one here in East Tennessee. I think some colder weather's coming in next week. Later, uh, about this time next week, some colder, maybe some snow showers in here next week. But for now, it's very mild, and we're going to enjoy it. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the uh, the parades where you can go catch the parades. See if I can get those for you real quick. Johnson City, 1130 tomorrow. Kingsport at 5 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, Elizabethan at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. I think some of the others are going to be later on in the month of December. I know Jonesboro's in December, uh, December the 9th, rather. Uh, let's see. Abington Parade. Uh, I was trying to see this real quick, and I don't have that. So I think Bloomingdale's Parade is tomorrow as well. Where is Abington's Parade? I want to see if I can get that before I get out of here. Oh, scanning it, and I don't see it on the sheet. Unfortunately, so. Nope, I don't see it on here. But anyway, I told you the one's coming up tonight and tomorrow. Again, Johnson City's tomorrow at 1130. Kingsport's tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Elizabethan's tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Those are some of the Christmas parades in the region. So have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. We'll be live at Bristol Motor Speedway. Until then, for all of our guests and for Eric Sandifer, store manager here at Food City, this is Tom Taylor telling you, as always, win or lose, be a good sport. Have a great weekend. So long, everybody.